Good evening to you. How are you folks? It's good to see you all. It's good to be seen by you all. Welcome to Wastrel Wednesday when the Viking Hand GM should be here any second now. That is as soon as I allow him in the studio. I, of course, am Bill Sylvie, aka the Dungeon Delver, and welcome to the last Classic Traveler game of 2022. I'm sure Kyle has a humdinger for us tonight. And don't, don't worry, by the way, if you didn't see in the description, don't worry. Yes, we'll do Advent Calendar, but all the way at the end. We'll do that then. So I'm going to turn the wheel over to your friend and mine, Mr. Kyle Schuant, and welcome him on board. G'day, Kyle. Good morning, boys and girls, or morning, or evening, whatever it is, where you are. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Today, all sorts of fun awaits. Oh boy. The so it is called reckoning. Reckoning, oh boy. And you can't spell you can't spell reckoning without the word wreck. So with that said, let's uh let's bring the rest of our victim, I mean our players in. Uh here's Razor. Here's right, Razor and uh introduce your characters to one by one for the last one of the year for any new viewers especially and for our older viewers who have forgotten who is who and what is what and just remember <laughs> the bedazzled yes i am quinda bud uh two-term marine um <laughs> if you want it shot at i'm the shooter <laughs> awesome i'm playing i'm playing linda uh i'm the rocket raccoon of the group big guns um electronics and predominantly cargo manager also one part, I guess, merchant as the only real merchant marine here. I, of course, am uh, Bogo Jorts, the mutant. No, wait, uh, that's somebody else in a different game. Um, I, of course, am your your handsome captain, Reggie Willie. Um, you know, I just kind of view myself as a man who inspires and leads this team to accomplishing ever greater deeds and feats of daring do. That's that's my role, I think, in all of this. And, of course, I couldn't do it without an awesome crew, so let's say hello to Sapphire. What you're saying is you're a bad influence. <laughs> oh, unquestionably bad. I let them smoke cigars and read dirty magazines and drink beer. <laughs> I'm the uncle the, the entire crew wanted when they were growing up. That's just because you want free beer and dirty magazines. And I didn't say it wasn't. <laughs> yes, this is a very working class setting. This is working class in space, just like Alien and all the rest. <laughs> so beer and dirty <laughs> magazines fits. I I it's a little, little closer to Dark Star, but uh <laughs> Yep, yep, this is true. It's not the gleaming shininess of uh of Star Trek. No, no, it's it's like Dark Star meets Outland by way of uh Alien. <laughs> With a touch of red dwarf. <laughs> a, a touch. Just 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 a little bit of red dwarf. <laughs> I don't have a motorized big wheel to ride around the ship, but it's not that big of a ship. All righty. I am Jenna Henson. I am a scout for term. I am the mechanic that keeps this thing going. And it, it has been a challenge, but definitely we've, we've gotten from one system to another, regardless of whatever's happened, either 
in my control or out of, but my ship now is very, very antiseptic. I am ensuring that we do not go back to having any kind of issues at all with that said. So what you're saying is, is you've become a neurotic clean freak. Uh, I wouldn't say neurotic, just very OCD-ish. <laughs> I hope I haven't traumatized you, uh, Sapphire, that, you know, when you, if you see a roach in your home or something, you, you now freak out and start worrying about it eating the foundations. No, because we don't have roaches. <laughs> I have I have cats, so oh, anything right. that could even remotely like decide to try to make our house a, a good place to stay gets hunted and eaten. I once I, I once had a player I gave nightmares to. I, I don't really want to do that again. <laughs> it would take a lot. And let's uh, you know the glue that holds the gears together of this adventuring group. And yes, I'm well aware of what I said. Uh, you know, no team is a team without its mascot. No, no, no great uh, band is, is, is truly great without it, without a, 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 it's wacky member. No morning zoo crew is complete without its comic relief. And the same holds true here. Let us welcome the bandit bedazzler Bubba himself in the flesh, live via TCPIP. Bring it on home, Bubba. Bubba Gump. <laughs> wow, the bedazzling bandit. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I play uh, Bubba. Uh, I served uh, three three tours in the Marine Corps. I'm big, I'm dumb, I'm fun. Um, I'm down to honky tonk, stab Dude, people, and then bedazzle. Sure. Not necessarily in that order. But that's what Bubba's about. Excellent. All righty. So the uh, adventures so far, is anyone willing to have a crack at summarizing them? <laughs> so far. I did it last time, so no. Bill's <laughs> oh, looking clean. <laughs> we 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 have an, Do we have another crew member? Uh, nope, nope. Uh, we're um, one one crew member out. Uh, will they be joining us, uh, Razor? The, they're expecting to. Uh, okay. Send them the link. All right. Score. So, yeah, I um, don't didn't say she was going to be late, but any anything could be happening. Switch. Of course, real life, real life, he folks. Had an infestation yep. of space roaches. That could be. So, essentially, what happened was my my storied and and esteemed career in the Navy having come to an end. I was uh, left to languish on a planet with my sidekick Bubba, um, where we came under the employ of a woman who was. Uh, looking for artifacts, and boy, did she find one with this ship. <laughs> when we were accosted, accosted, I say, by the forces of villainy, uh, um, on the world of Gibson. You shine that turd. <laughs> so we uh, we ended up. Uh, we, we, we ended up dealing with some malcontents and their, their, their repeated attempts to foist illegal artificial intelligence technology on us, We're which really I, I as, as, the, as the law-abiding, I, I want you to remember that, law-abiding. <laughs> okay, now you're just twisting it. <laughs> said, no! No! We can't take this. It bears the death penalty. And so off our ship it went. Yet forces of malcontent were were hot on our heels and once again attempted to plant this this horrible, malevolent machine on our ship. Yeah, it returned like a bad penny, didn't it? Uh, As we fled across the velvet black firmament, we were attacked unjustly <laughs> by the warlike <laughs> the, the warlike the forces Joseph of Heights of Heldeman. 
But the joke would be on them because in damaging our ship, our beloved ship, they blew their evidence into the eternal void of space. Thus, we journeyed to a nearby station. I also, uh, I blew, also blew away your ATV and part of your hull. Oh, don't and remind may I, may I also remind you, they nearly killed the person whose station is in that section. <laughs> Very true. And they tried to take my fancy shoes, which is a no-no. <laughs> Dear audience, do you see the depredations that have been heaped upon us by by this cruel universe? And think of all the work I had to do that time. And that was even before the tainted water. Indeed, indeed. Through pestilence and fire, we have persevered until we have found ourselves once again journeying Bubba. through the stars. Bubba. Have you been feeding our Captain Absinthe again? <laughs> I, 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 plead, I, 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 I can neither confirm nor deny. That's fair. I don't think we have a Fifth Amendment. <laughs> Depends on the world you're on. I meant we as a crew. All right. <laughs> that number of amendments is like too many to... <laughs> so you started off on the world on the in the system of gibson up here on the screen not to be confused From... with the guitar <laughs> yep now from let's let's look at my thing so you were hired by uh Jaquel to do an archaeological dig where you found the ship that you're now flying in. Um, you uh, then, on return to the ship, you found yourself in a firefight with uh, Ballard and some noma nomads. Ballard, who ran the pawn shop, and Ballard, who later turned out to have been one of the crew or um, cargo of the ship, because on the ship was also some uh, uh, some criminals frozen in cold sleep tubes. By the by, we should have called this ship the artifact, <laughs> or the or the flying fossil. I don't know. Did we officially name it yet? Yeah, we you did. One. You you eventually changed the transponder and the name to Eminent Domain. Oh, that's right. That's right. It, it was that's called the Heinlein. It was like Heinlein and a string of numbers because that's the um, the model, uh, the brand name model kind of thing but uh yeah you changed it to eminent domain eventually um then you uh, so after fighting them off and taking the ship you, you yeah you, you took the ship um and uh we'll give you, it that uh, nickname the uh some no the nomads uh, showed up and you fired your your uh, anti-missile lasers at him <laughs> and vaporized lord humongous um, then you uh, awakened the convicts, sedated them, and uh, dropped them down underneath your ship, all tied up so that they'd get blasted when you when you took off. Well, we and, thought uh, so. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you, you took the, the nomad that you had prisoner, you took him off into the nearby forest and uh, left him there. Then you took off, left them behind. You From Gibson, you went on to Lieber. Um, on the way into Lieber, you to save fuel, you did a grab assist around its gas giant, um, and in the process, shook your ship up and, and blew one of the turrets. The ship wasn't in really great condition. You landed on Lieber, and you hang around Lieber for some time. Now, Lieber was under occupation by Helderman's Josephite forces, so back in Helderman, um, the Josephites are having war with uh, another country. And they'd gone and occupied Lieber in the hopes of getting some higher technology and some industry and so on to help them fight the war back on Haldeman. Because the best thing to do when you're losing a war is to expand it. Just ask the Japanese in World War II. Um, so you spent some time there. 
and uh, while you were on Libra, you found that a lien had been placed on your ship by Ballard. Ballard showed up and said, oh, this is my ship. And so you went to the local court and all the rest. Um, then you went and reported Ballard to the, uh, the Commonwealth Marshal because in, on retrieving documents from your ship, you found that Ballard was indeed one of the prisoners that had been transported on the ship. So evidently what had happened was that 30 or 40 years ago, um, the inmate or inmates on the ship had taken control of it or the ship had crashed. And uh, when it crashed, Ballard made a new life for himself on, um, on Gibson and from time to time went back to the ship to retrieve some cargo and keep building the place up, uh, keep uh, building up his business and so on over those years. Um, but he was nonetheless a, a wanted criminal, even if it was from like 30 years or some ago. Uh, so they reported Ballard to the marshal. So there was all this legal entanglement. So they were entangled with the local court who said, you know, the ship can't take off. And then they had brought in the uh, the Commonwealth Marshal to investigate. So they were going, and then they're going around looking for Ballard. Ballard and his mates found him, and they found that the two convicts they thought were dead were not. They had evidently escaped their bonds and not been wiped out in the takeoff. Um, Ballard's lawyer Odendirk served them some papers and got beaten up by Bubba because the best thing to do when you're served papers by a lawyer is to smack him in the head. Um, <laughs> Abs absolutely, 100%. That's what you should expect if you're a lawyer. And he threatened to take my fancy shoes. <laughs> so It was more about the shoes, I think. <laughs> the crew then decided that they didn't like this hotel where they get served papers, and they went to, to a rundown flop house instead. At the rundown flop house, house Bellard and his crew and, and his mates had done... Um, decided to do, they like the idea of doing things extra judiciary, extra judicially and uh, came to find the crew and uh, they were also they had also killed somebody in the next room the uh, there was a very nasty firefight and and stabbings going on inside the enclosed corridors of this dirty flop house um, there were yeah there was lots of shooting and lots of stabbing going on. And in the end, Ballard's crew had the worst of it, and they were all knocked down. And the players dragged Ballard and uh, his... I think Ballard was dead, but the other two guys weren't quite dead. They were just severely wounded. So the um, the crew dragged uh, Ballard's crew members. I can't remember the names now, but he, he dragged them in to their uh, bathroom, um, put them in the bath and cut their throats. Vicious bastards. Um... So then we, they we went and the term gave them neck time. <laughs> so then they immediately went off to their, their ship. They uh, tore the custom seals off it and they jumped on the ship. Um, and the Helderman troops were coming up to question them and they just took off. Last but the Helderman troops on the way off. Out into space, the Joseph I ship Hamburg chased them. Uh, they were trying to outrun them. They, um, the ship fired three salvos of missiles at them, five of the, the uh, I think it was 12 different uh, missiles hit, um, mostly hull damage. Notably, the damage was uh, to the cargo area, and that's when they lost the AI, which was still aboard their ship, and when they also lost the, um, uh, the ATV, the rented ATV. <laughs> <laughs> They'd rented like 80 days before. <laughs> we'll never get um, our deposit back. <laughs> so um, from Libra, they jumped to Le Guin. To uh, Le Guin, there was a naval port there, uh, HMS Crowbar, and uh, they went to Crowbar and got the ship repaired. They didn't bother landing on Le Guin. After getting their ship repaired, they uh, cruised to the jump point, um, and then they jumped to Kafka. On arrival in Kafka, they found um, they they found uh, um, floating around in space. They found firstly they found that there there was some erosion of their hull, both inside and out, and they found these little bugs, these little sort of black roach type things crawling around 
and munching away on their hull. And either the, the bugs were eating titanium and stuff or something that they were excreting was like acidifying the, the hull and, and wasting it away. So um, they found that those things were living in the water supply of the ship. So they purged that. They put that through the reactor, superheating it, and then dissociate the water and the hydrogen and the oxygen and then put it back together in the form of water. And that, was, that seemed to kill them off. Um, and uh, then uh, Sapphire and uh, her mates went around and cleaned the ship fanatically. They also found um, an, um, uh, a ship that had been shot up. That ship that had been... Um, so, yeah, who was at this time? That ship that had been shot up uh, had come from Tanaka. Apparently at Tanaka, when they when they got the black box and they listened to the logs and so on, apparently at Tanaka, uh, a union. So you guys are in the Commonwealth. The union had come in and done an attack. And this ship, had, while trying to escape, had misjumped and ended up further north on the map. Um, so further along, where are we up to? So, yeah, they had the water erosion bugs. Um, they came after the ship had been repaired at Crowbar. Um, they got there. So then they jumped to... <clears throat> so then they jumped to Kafka. And then, oh, sorry, Kafka had a moon around it, Felice. They decided to land on Felice because their ship was a bit eroded and they thought going into a big gravity well might tear the ship apart. So they did the repairs on a nice soft moon instead, nice low gravity moon instead. They decided that they would jump back to uh, Le Guin. Ah, this, sorry, this is when they found the Lady Luck. They arrived at Le Guin. There was a fire in the cargo hold and they they, um, they put out the fire. They found Lady Luck. Lady Luck was um, uh, had uh, a cargo of food and stuff and had been shot up and uh, had, had misjumped from Tanaka. It was at that point that that had happened. They arrived at Crowbar to to um, tell them of the uh, infestation on their ship and to complain and demand their money back for their repairs and uh, and fuel and so on. You gave us tainted fuel. And they learned that Crowbar itself was infested with all these little bugs and they were desperately fighting them off. Uh, there were And there were a whole bunch of civilian and naval ships standing off the station that couldn't go, uh, that, that couldn't or wouldn't go anywhere. Um, so they sold off their food and silver, the um, cargo that they had, to the ships that are around. And then there were three for tidy civilian... profits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for tidy profits. And there were three yeah. civilian ships um, around, uh, floating around that wanted to get out of there, but um, they didn't have enough fuel to be able to go and land and, and pick all the processing ability to go and land and pick up their own fuel and reaction mass. So... Uh, the crew of the eminent domain made a, a nice little profit just going and landing on a nearby rock ice asteroid um, and drawing off some water and then bringing it back to the civilian ships. So then they flew out to the jump point and decided to jump back to Gibson. And they did the Gibson jump, and that's where we find them now, coming out of j- jump at Gibson. And can we all give Kyle a round of applause for showing us up with his eloquent recap? That was genuinely good. (laughs) Well, sorry, it's just my... um, You did did, did uh, better notes than I do. (laughs) Well, I just do that because otherwise I never remember what the hell. Even with those notes, I still didn't remember. Look, I'll show you what I... um, This is how I do it. And maybe um, maybe useful uh, tips for other... um, other game masters out there. Mine was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Bill's was more entertaining. Um, <laughs> so, so I just I do it like that. So, so the the here's the year, the um, day you started on day one hundred. Gibson four seven. Uh, that's the hex location. Lands together in shuttle. Mustered out. Hired the Jaquel. Jik- Travelled to dig site. Blah blah blah. So there's just all that record. And you can see here down here there's a record of a previous campaign um, running the same system. 
uh, where you can see, it, and as I've gone through the days, I've wiped out their previous records. They miss out. I've, I've still got it elsewhere, but anyway. Um, the, uh, yeah, so you can see that Hannibal Daisy battle. Their ship was called the Daisy, and they had a battle. And then, and then there was an ATSB board of inquiry, <laughs> and their ship was seized, and Hannibal kept. <laughs> and um, and uh, John, the player John, he lost his captain, and Tim, his pilot's license. <laughs> Um, so all sorts of daft stuff happened um, uh, with theirs. Uh, you can see also I've got, um, where we go? Here's the uh, subsector that lists all the worlds in it. Um, I generated them randomly. There's some sites that you can do that with. Uh, and then each world just follows a, a format. So I just make the page up once and then I go, I, oh, you know, equals... Equal, I put an equal author subsector C6 and then um, I go over to there, just boom, boom, boom. And then each of the worlds in turn with some little notes about their down port. And uh, the contents of the down port are also randomly generated from a website. So this looks like an enormous, enormous amount of work, but mostly it's copy. It's um, letting a, a website generate it for me randomly and then copying and pasting. And then when you guys come and encounter it, uh, I just sort of come up with whatever seems more or less reasonable. So, the, the, but the key is just doing everything randomly. There's just way too much work if you if you do it all yourself. Agreed. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So there's your little um, there's your little uh, GMing tip of the day. Uh, the audience just make shit up use the dice and make shit up <laughs> so there's a big subsector and and you usually need less than you think so they've got that big subsector and yet in the course of about 12 sessions they've only gone to uh what was it Gib gibson they didn't go to helderman they went to gibson leader leguin kafka back to Leguin and then Gibson. So then they went to one, one, two, three, four worlds. And one of those worlds was where they started. So they yep. didn't have a choice but to go there. So. Having a jump one drive also helps with that. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, uh, other games can be restricted in other ways. Like, uh, you know, oh, yeah. if you're adventure, like if you're first level D&D adventurers, you're going on foot. Oh, you yeah. just can't go that fast. And if the game, game master is saying, okay, we go to this place that's 30 miles away, and the game master is thinking, oh, shit, I haven't rolled up those hexes yet. I don't know what's there. That's what wandering monsters are for. That slows them down and delays them until the next session, and then you've got the next session to think about things. <laughs> you've got that week to think about things. So That's the only thing keeping my players in the wilderness right now is the two-month journey towards any other form of civilization that they would have to make. <laughs> <laughs> through the wilderness with very few roads and me checking six times a day, every day for random encounters. <laughs> um, a razor, there's Mebius in the uh, comments. He's saying, all those brown boxes behind razor make me ever so curious. I thought he said nervous, but no, curious. Are they books on the, the spine? Hard to tell. They're, they're books laid on their, on their side. That's my library. How can you lay your books on the side? That seems wrong somehow. Uh, I got that way. I can see the row behind them. <laughs> well, also um, one one thing I will say: this is speaking as a book nerd and see? more books um, collector of sorts. If you lay your books like this and you stack them, um, yeah. it's not good for the binding. Mm -hmm. That is that is the only thing. Um, unless you have soft bound books like this one, then it doesn't really matter. But if you have yeah. hard bound books, um, it is stacking them like this is murder on the binding. It, it's yeah. it, it's better to stack them like that or better. Yeah, like I just that. don't have the shelf space for my library that I would like. Oh, agreed. Okay. Not good for their binding. I never thought about that. Um, yeah. I, I just, I mean, you know, the, the uh, only books that I read multiple times are my role playing game books, and most of them have got terrible binding anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and you have to worry about humidity and all that kind of thing for the bindings. If you really want to get technical, the older they get. So, <laughs> yeah, I haven't had too much problem with humidity, even living in Maryland. It has to be pretty bad for that to happen. But I'm usually more worried about my antiques. <laughs> I'm down here in Florida, and my books hold up pretty good. So I don't. Maybe I treat them right. <laughs> There you go, Mobius. Your, your question more than well, I, I I live in South Arkansas, also known as the planet Dagobah, and uh, <laughs> the books here do do all right sometimes. Yeah, until somebody grabs them and colors them in. <laughs> Hey, at least the book burning stopped in the 70s. <laughs> All right, guys. So you've maybe just jumped that's out. Why, maybe that's why the wife did the crayons. <laughs> you've just jumped out into Sweet Home Gibson. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, remember, Gibson's only got a classy port. So, um, you know, you just basically ring the local cops or you call up the local cops and they give you permission to land and you go and you land. It's just a marked piece of bedrock with a, uh, a, you know, an aluminium warehouse next to it. A couple of guys in boiler suits. And you, you come down to land. All right. Uh, I, I make a, uh, a ship's boat roll? Yes, make a ship's boat roll to make a nice, neat landing. Next to the aluminum building. <laughs> I, I, I was about to say, Kyle said what? I <laughs> Where are the other syllables coming from? A nice average, uh, a nice average landing, a seven. Yeah, it's it's not neat, but it's not messy. You don't accidentally land on the warehouse or anything like that. Anyway, it's, the warehouse is like a kilometer away from the actual landing spot because they want to have multiple landing spots and also because they know that some guys are a bit sloppy with their landing. <laughs> they, want to have a, they want to have a bit of room for error. Those two guys in boiler suits will work out in the warehouse and their one manager who's never there. <laughs> they want to be nice and safe. Do they still have the busted Coca-Cola machine next to a <clears throat> next to a non-functional payphone? Of course, yeah. All right. So you go in your land, um, and the uh, the crew come rolling out in one of those, you know, airport type things, but with a crane, so that you can walk out onto the you know the cherry picker th kind of thing. Yeah. So you can walk out onto that and then get lowered down to the ground. Um, so you don't have to you know abseil down your own crane. Oh, it's not the flight steps, huh? <laughs> We're a little high up for flight steps. Well, uh, there's that, and every ship hey, is a Captain. different size. Sorry. Yes, Bubba? Hey, 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 Captain, is there any way maybe you could get the engineers on board our ship to uh, have like an inflatable little twisty slide that would just stick its tongue out there when we <laughs> land so we can just slide down? An emergency slide. I take I, I I take my clipboard, flip it open. Noted. Hey Bubba, I have a I have a pretty nice solution for you. Okay. I'm gonna go and grab. I'll 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 grab our our loading crane. And I'm pretty sure it has. Does it? Does it? Does our loading crane? Can, they, can I set up like a separate like radio remote for the loading crane, like a handheld, like you know, like big like toy car remote kind control? Of remote? Yeah, if you want to. You know what I mean? Because then all we have to do is stick Bubba on. It's like, hey, Bubba, hold this hook, and now I can lower him up and down and swing him around, and it's hours <laughs> of entertainment. <laughs> Just, just, just don't, just don't caulk him against the ship's hull. Exactly. Well, well, I'll, and we'll if we got an inflatable head. one, he couldn't bedazzle it don't because he'd put a hole in it. Time. He'd put a hole in it if we let him that, decorate that's, that's it. What glue just, is. Yeah, you glue him on. Just don't <laughs> melt it. <laughs> 
Problem is, if it inflates and, and he puts it on, then when he shrinks it, all the it's going to pop all the glue loose. Yeah, they all just pop off. Or vice so versa. He has it again. It's, it's like Sisyphus, right? Yeah. <laughs> It'll take somebody's eye out. Exactly. And oh. that way, that way, that, that way, when we take off, we take off in a poof of bedazzled. <laughs> Captain? Yes? Are we sure we can't do what I said about Bubba and when he's sleeping? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Let's, um... I don't know, but it sounds funny. <laughs> So, what do we want to do first, crew? Well, uh, didn't somebody say something about checking out the, um, what's his name shop? Yep. Don't we have food to sell too? Or did we already sell all that? No, we yeah. sold our food. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're completely yeah. empty. So sold the food, yeah. the silver, and the crystals. But all we've right. got. Yeah, so you land down, you go down to the, the warehouse. It's still got the Coke machine, uh, the vending machines, and there's a broken payphone there as well. Um, the wind sweeps a, a, across the, the blank, burnt-out, glassed-out tarmac. The old tumbleweed goes by. These guys in boiler suits are just sitting back, smoking. And they say, oh, you guys again. You were here a few months back, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, we were. Mm -hmm. it seemed like a nice place. Decided to revisit. Hmm. Yeah, yeah they kind of grown on us. Yeah, they told us to watch out for you. They who? Oh, the sheriff and stuff. Really? They say why? I don't know. Something going on. Tell me about that pawn shop guy. He does a bushman's <laughs> hanky on the on the yeah. I'm sorry. Did it's you say that porn shop guy? Because look, I, I paid for those videos. <laughs> pawn, pawn shop, hawk shop, <laughs> resale. Oh. Yeah. P A W N. Anyway, I, I, I think Bubba's not hearing any difference there. It's fine. <laughs> You're well, not... Why do they sell? They sell animals there. They have paws. <laughs> oh, um, it's that prawn shop, you know. Uh, prawns. Prawns are tasty, you know. Yep. I'm going to continue to talk to these guys. We're not well, getting into seafood now. <laughs> yeah. While your while your crew talks nonsense, what are you saying to these? What what time's the port bus coming by? Or do you guys got to call them or what? Oh, we'll call them if you want. Yeah, yeah we'll call them. Yeah. Listen. Um, you know, TV or anything? Uh, no, it's currently in orbit around Asimov. Um, long story. Uh I'm gonna. Kyle is 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 is, cu is currency federal or is it all strictly local? Uh, depends on the place, but I mean uh, the interstellar um, currency is a mixture of gold uh, is like gold, silver, and platinum. Precious metals are accepted everywhere. Okay, because it's hard to have credit notes and things like that because <laughs> it's very easy to forge, and, and by the time they found out that it's fake, you've left. <laughs> all right. Um. Well, I'm going to slip these guys. Uh, well, I, I don't. I don't think we got any of our any of our uh, stuff in precious metals, do we? That's out of character. Um, oh, it, no, you're um, because like when you got paid for like hauling the ice and stuff like that for those guys, you wouldn't have taken pay payment in IOUs. <laughs> they would have paid you in gold and silver and stuff. So. Okay, all right, so then. We do uh, have currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. We're like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give these guys, uh, you know, like a. Basically, I'm gonna slip them the equivalent of, uh, of like a uh, hundred bucks a piece. 
yep. you know, the buying equivalent, whether that's one gold coin or five gold coins or whatever, and just say, uh, yeah, listen, hey, um, if the sheriff asks, nah, we weren't here, right? Well, I think they'll know somebody is here. And you realize this because, like, you, you, your ship comes in with it with its primary drive, which is a fusion reaction out the back, which is like a 20 kiloton nuclear weapon going off every second. So you're a star in the sky <laughs> until you get about 80 kilometers up, and then you switch to your secondary drive, and then you just and then you what pour water out, and then it's like a rocket. You know, what so people is, know when you've landed. It ain't us. <laughs> It's just some random <laughs> ship that came and left. Just some random ship. All right. Just some free traders. You ain't seen me and you ain't seen any of my crew. And Is that what sure for you? We'll forget the name. He says, well, look, look, mate, it's not my business. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's make it even. Let's let's. And I, I, I just offer him the money and I say, I say it's negative your business. It's like less than none of your business now, right? He looks a bit puzzled and scratches the side of his balding head at, at that. <laughs> you didn't see anything. My education. You didn't see anything. <laughs> Welcome to Port Royal, Mr. Smith. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, but you haven't heard of me is, is my approach here. So... Look, whether he takes the money or not, that's you know. Yeah, he'll take the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, he'll take the money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you just like walk up to a random council worker in the street while he's leaning, while he's breastfeeding his shovel and offer him a hundred bucks, he might be puzzled, but he'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Hopefully, with the sh if the sheriff rolls around in a couple hours, is for he won't blurt out, "Yeah, some guy gave me two hundred bucks to say I never saw him." <laughs> he's poorly educated, but he's not stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, to me, those things kind of seem synonymous in that sentence. <laughs> All right. Well, no, that's guileless. That's a, this is a different thing. There's a difference between low int and low whiz. <laughs> yeah. um, this man has both. We'll we'll wait we'll wait for the bus, and uh, as soon as it gets here, head back into town. Okay, a guy comes along um, uh, in a mini bus, and it's very dusty and it's very colorful, and there's loud music blaring out. Because of course there is. Yeah. Is it honky tonk what's, music? What's the law level in this town or in this <clears throat> planet? Okay, this world is. If memory serves, firearms are fine. I will paste it in the chat. Not in town, but I'm reminded of of a taxi ride my wife and I took in Barbados. Lovely country, Barbados, by the way. Um, our taxi driver was extremely nice, but I'm pretty sure the rear axle of the car was welded directly to the strut that comprised <laughs> the, the seat that I was in. Every pothole we hit, and there were many was transmitted directly into my gluteus and right up my spine. <laughs> yeah, it's not a high law level. I posted that in the uh, in the chat for you there, Razor. Uh, yes, Gibson E567674-9. E5757? 56 Seven six seven four. Thank you. And for those who don't know Traveller and its strange string of numbers to describe characters or worlds, here is. I think, which gives you the key. Okay, and um, the um, that's a combination of my luggage. All right, so um, <coughs> oh, there it is. all right, so the minibus rolls up, and it's the same guy you've seen before with a 
uh, a very black tan on one arm and pale white on the other. <laughs> Spends a lot of time driving this man. Yes. Dark on one side of the face, light on the other. <clears throat> and uh, a thin, droopy cigar hanging out of his mouth. Fluffy dice hanging from the rear vision mirror. And he, he says, get in, fellas. 20 each. All right. Sounds we'll like a plan. Up. We'll pile in. I'll pay the man. Mm-hmm. All right. So to the middle of town then? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. He wheels it around. You pull about two Gs as he, as he wheels the minibus around. Nice. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and, you know, oh, I didn't know it could tilt that far off its side wheels and still, still not fall over, still not roll. Peachy. <laughs> you come back down, boom, dust kicks up, and the, you're right on. The loud music still playing as you burn through. <laughs> We're in it's- India now. <laughs> <laughs> it's reggae. It's either reggae or soca. It's one of those two because that's what you hear in taxis. <laughs> reggae and, is just uh, fine. It rides through the suburbs <laughs> and then uh, it pulls up in front of the town hall with a sudden stop. <laughs> and, uh, you don't have airbags, but you do have the vinyl seat in front of you. <laughs> I think nice. Kathy may be waiting in the waiting room. Oh, yeah. Oh. Just caught that. Oh, Hello, Tammy. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Good to see you, Tammy. You missed the We're just uh, getting the recap started. Of events. <laughs> I had the um, I had the uh, factual recap of events, and Bill had the poetic recap of events. You may want to go back and watch it later for laughs. Oh well, man, for, that's what I Bill's get for picking an employee phone call. <laughs> that's what you get for working. Don't know what to tell you. you do yes, that. that's what I get for working and having a conscience and work ethics. Dang it! No, nah, you don't want to do that. You just like retire and just game. That's yeah, what I'm looking from, forward to. If you retire, well, just if you can't afford to retire, just be homeless. You know, like you know, you can get cheap data on mobile phones now. Live under a bridge <laughs> in a cardboard box. Keep gaming. Hey, around here, they give it away free. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. All righty. So the crew, um, so Tammy, the crew has gone back to Gibson. The planet we started from. Yeah, where, where it all began. Back to where it all began. And they've already been warned by the guys at the port that uh yeah we're found out that we're wanted <laughs> for questioning well, also, yeah one of the, the the local sheriff wants to talk to them apparently. said yeah, yeah let us know if these guys show up. well maybe he wants some styling flip-flops those bizarre on flip-flops maybe that's why he <laughs> wants to question us or <laughs> or didn't somebody offer him a date i didn't offer him no a date. that was i that can was definitely say that the one that uh What's your arrest What's you the for? What they tried to suit? pick up on? No, that was a different dude. <laughs> your fashion criminals. He wants to arrest us all for uh, okay for, for crimes against design. <laughs> um, I for one would be fine with talking to him because I'm fine with outing Ballard here. We outed Ballard everywhere else. <laughs> well, if he runs into us, we'll find out. Exactly. Speaking of Ballard, uh. Let's let's go loot a pawn shop, guys. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <coughs> I need a shotgun. Now you're talking my language, Captain. All right, so you head on off to Bellard's pawn shop. He's getting a bad oh, review you- from me. I'm sorry. Somehow, I don't think he'll live to regret it. Mm. <laughs> Well, obviously Ballard isn't there because you left him dead in the hallway of a flop house of on the yeah. lever. <laughs> Shot oh, and did him. we? <laughs> Tom we don't Bodette. know anything about that. <laughs> Just yeah, I, as God intended. 
All right. So Ballard Pawn Shop, what's it looking like, Kyle? Because it's, it's been looking, a month and change. It's looking very much open. Okay, there's the same assistant there that you saw before, uh, uh, Ballard's assistant. Um, and you see an older woman about Ballard's age, you know, in her 50s or something. Could that be the wifey? The <laughs> Probably. Oh, I well. wonder if she, she'll appreciate what we've done. <laughs> yeah. I don't think... Uh, Bubba, let's you and me hang out um, and maybe uh, our distaff uh, members go in and case the joint and find out who uh, yonder uh, lady of the counter is before we make a decision to roll deep on this place. <laughs> okay. Well, since... Okay, but hey, I've when y'all go in, in there, there. See, see if they got samurai swords and pick me up one. Yes, that's that's true. Uh, I think Bill is remembering correctly because, as I recall it, it was just the guys, the male members of the crew who went in. So yeah, Bill's I've Reggie, never been in there, so I could go Bill's in. Bill's Reggie yeah. and uh, and uh, Todd's Bubba had gone in there, but uh, yeah, I have... uh, Kinder and um, Tammy's Jane and uh, Sapphire's character have not been in. And and Linda hasn't been in either. Mm, that's right. I want to go browse. Let's see what they got. <clears throat> sure. Okay, they're they're a regular pawn shop. They've got the the usual assortment. You know, there's exercise bikes only being used once, not worn out, and it, used once and then folded up under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I resemble that remark. <laughs> Um, Our cat uses it to twice. perch on. His, um, yeah, oh, they had some clothes hung on them for a bit. Um, there's, That's uh, a treadmill. <laughs> there's uh, uh, there's uh, jewelry and watches and musical instruments. Lots of abandoned dreams there. A number of engagement rings. More abandoned dreams. Um, yeah, Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Are, are, are there local film and record awards also? There's a <laughs> yes. guitar. As as well as um as well as films and records themselves. Um and uh there's uh, sports gear and uh, there's weapons as well. Mm. Okay, you just said uh my Disneyland weapons. <laughs> um now, re recall that on this world, um, you can get the most weapons that you want, but you have to have a local permit for them. Uh, so it, it depends on how you present yourself. Basically, when you're at the pawn shop, you can get the weapons at the normal price with a permit or at an inflated price without a permit, provided uh, you get a good reaction roll and they don't. so Because like when Todd went in <laughs> and basically said, you know, hey, can I buy a machine gun? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's it's very subtle about it, you know? I should point out. <laughs> he wasn't very subtle about it, so they they like because <laughs> he's going. He walks in with his eye and tight, <laughs> so they just like this guy's a fed. Get him out of here. <laughs> um. So this lady behind the counter. Yep. Uh, what's she like? Uh, well, she's a middle-aged woman. She's got dyed red hair. Um, she's got a, a wedding ring on. A few. She's a white woman. She's got a few kind of liver spots on her hands and stuff like that. She looks to be in her fifties. She's Congrats. a Karen. Congrats! You just <laughs> described my mother. Um, <laughs> she has she has bangles and things on as well. You're still not far off. Okay. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll walk up and ask if she's seen Ballard recently. She said, oh, you uh, must not be from around here. My husband, um, he's, he, uh, he disappeared. No. He went um, off. He went off on, he went out of off world on business a little while back and didn't come back. No, no, no. It's not that. Uh, I ran into him off world. 
Did you? Oh yeah. Where'd you run into? Um, that that's neither here nor there. But I figured that he told me to swing back around here and see then see him next time. Next time he was in, it was Le Guin, uh, some 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 system like that. I I I'm bad with names, but um, uh, the the assistant said says, uh, "Oh, you saw my dad? Where was he?" As I said, it was between there. There were some Nazi dickhead in charge. Um, they were causing all. They were the, the Gestapo were causing all kinds of problems. So both he and I, we we we, we split and got out of there. But oh, that I sounds was, like the Josephites, those lunatics in Haldeman. Yeah, that's 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 that sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah, them. Um, we so anyway, we we split. Right, we we split we split company, and when he came, but before but before we split, he came back through, and and said that yeah, I, I was supposed to meet him here, and I just you know uh, seeing if if he's back. No, he's not back. He's oh, I I see that I see he's that he's been gone now. for about uh, ninety a hundred days now. Um. He said he had a package or something for me. Well, at least he said he would have it. But I guess since he's not here, don't 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 worry about it. There, don't. I don't, don't know worry. anything about that. She says. That's that's fine. Um, it's it's Mossberg shaped, about you know three feet long. <laughs> <laughs> she says, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Okay, well that's okay. Um, no worries if you she, just. She doesn't the... laugh, by the way. That's just me. Laughing. No, that's valid. <laughs> That's valid. I have to clarify um, these sorts of things. I feel sometimes. Um, the other night at dinner, um, my six-year-old daughter spontaneously said, "Papa, is life hard?" <laughs> and I just—I was so surprised. I just laughed, and and she was grossly offended at my laughing. <laughs> oh, I don't laugh. I was like, oh, I understand. It's a serious question. It is sometimes for some people. Yes, but you know, blah, blah, blah. But she just kept getting offended that I'd laughed. <laughs> That's valid. That's valid. Um, okay. Well, my um, kids learned sarcasm early. <laughs> yeah. Like a six year old girl asking, is life hard? <laughs> but children can be the most astute creatures. They really can. They can. They can. My, my oldest, before she could talk using baby sign language, combined the sign for fish and cracker to tell us she wanted goldfish. <laughs> nice. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh shit. Well, <laughs> what I'm, am I in for? <laughs> I'm going to kind of just shrug my shoulders and look at them and be like, so, uh, well, I guess there is my mail order Mossberg, but um, would you happen to have anything like that in? <clears throat> okay. Um, so make a reaction roll, roll CD6. Absolutely. Um, that's a four. Uh, she says she doesn't. Okay, just a second. Okay. Well, shrug. And um, yeah. You know, thank them. Thank them for their time. Sorry that I don't have any new news for them or anything about their dad. You know? I just have to find my own dice. And that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't. I want to check out their bladed weapons. Mm -hmm. Do they, by chance, have any broadswords? They've got shopping mall katanas. Oh God! I mean, there is one. <laughs> katana is better than a broadsword, man. There, there is one thing you can do with that shopping mall katana. <laughs> take a hacksaw, cut the entire bottom off. Take an angle grinder, grind off about the bottom foot, and then wrap that in duct tape and use that instead. <laughs> the katana's folded and beaten. It's it's just better, okay? <laughs> the Japanese did that because they have shit steel. Yeah, they, they yeah. have they have bad steel. That's sorry to break your fans, sports fans. <laughs> as long as we understand that chain guns always win. Um <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? If you're gonna bring a knife to a gunfight, you Better damn well be a Gurkha. <laughs> when you the unload, ones, they're the only ones that can get away with that. When you unload up fifteen hundred rounds of seven six two with a single or long trigger, 
you just you just look over look over the uh, spade grip and say, "Parry that, you casual." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you're ever going to fight a Jedi, bring a slug thrower. <laughs> All right. Yep. I asked for a Mossberg for a reason. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, they have blades. They have long blades and stuff. Yeah. They're not necessarily great quality, but they have them. <laughs> no, I'm specifically looking for a broadsword of some sort. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, they don't have a broadsword. Okay. Then I'll stick with my cutlass for now. So, okay. Um, <sighs> well, well, we got a little bit of information out of them already. So, say so go ahead. What kind of clothing do they have? Uh, I don't know. What do you normally find in a pawn shop? Not much. No, you eh, find like a no, pawn shop, you won't. No. A secondhand shop, yes, but a pawn shop, no. Hmm. So you find, you know. It's uh, not rent a sweater. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm good then because I can't think of anything. Yeah, you see. Oh, uh, okay. So, qu question: Are digital yeah. cameras a thing in this world or in this universe? No, they're not. Okay. <clears throat> How about Polaroids? Yep. That's as good as a digital camera as you'll get. Yeah, I know. Or even Denver, a thirty-five. Uh, Blue Oyster Casino, the Hotel California, the Deadbeat Pawn Shop. There's Ballard's Pawn Shop where you are. Mm. There's a Coffin Hotel, Sloppy Joe's Restaurant. There's a fancier restaurant. You can get unrefined fuel. There's a warehouses, Harry's Bank, and uh, St. Job's Hospital. That's the places of significance, apart from all your normal, like, courthouse and town hall and all that sort of stuff. Right. Okay. So that. Yeah. Okay. Um, unless somebody else has anything, I've got nothing else to look for here. So. Um, are there any other eggs? All right. That you I two on eat? the the two guys on the outside. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me a two d six roll. I got a six total. Okay, so um, you, you were a bit slow to notice. A local law enforcement has pulled up on the corner and uh, they got out of their vehicle and they're, they're walking towards you. They're about 20 yards away. They're obviously sort of you know, gesturing towards you. And they're just casually strolling towards you. All right, I will nudge Bubba in the ribs and say, get ready. <laughs> okay, um, so you... They're not Bubba, taking you... my fancy shoes. <laughs> <clears throat> Bubba, you've, uh, it, you glance up and down, you, you say your tactics. One of the benefits of tactics is a, it lets you sort of, you know, see if these guys are serious, if they know what they're doing. Um, and uh, these guys seem like regular cops. You, uh, they've got truncheons and sidearms. You wouldn't expect them to be, you know, tactical geniuses or uh, really great brawlers or anything like that. They're just used to dealing with local drunks, and they're not used to dealing with master criminals or getting into massive gunfights in rural properties and that sort of thing. When you look them up and down, that's what you see. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily call Bubba a master criminal. <laughs> <clears throat> He's a henchman in training. He's a joke. <laughs> he can be right. a jack of all trades. 
He's crunk. So are they are they walking up like nonchalantly or are they walking up? Yeah, they're walking up nonchalantly. Or? They walk up nonchalantly. They always have their they they almost always have their hands resting on their sidearm. Just casually resting well, then on this. Bubba side. has his hand it's resting. The real one of having your hands in your pockets. <laughs> yeah, Bub um, Bubba casually rests his hand on 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 Lucille's <laughs> handle. <laughs> okay, um, and so they appro approach and they stop about three yards away, and uh, they say, uh, "Gentlemen, you got any ID on you?" No, I'm afraid I left it on my ship. Well, oh, you're on the ship that just came in, are you? The eminent domain. I didn't say that. Well, there's no other ship that just came in. What's a ship that just came in nonsense you keep going on about? I said I left it on a ship. So you don't have any way to identify yourselves. Well, this is me and that's him. Are you having problems with object recognition? That's a sidewalk. That's a pawn shop. That's a car. Lo look quick, it's going up the street. Okay. Make a 2D6, Baltimore, you'll get shot. a 2D6 uh, roll and subtract two. <laughs> <laughs> the snark factor. <laughs> 10. Ooh. That's even with the 10. Okay. So the snark is obviously intimidating them a little bit. And they say, I see. I'm not even looking at it. I'm just looking at the diner that's across the street from this place. <laughs> a bored look like, ah, and, really? And one, of them, one of them just sort of presses a little radio on his, on his, on his vest and he, he murmurs something into the radio. You get and the local. Stand, they just stand there looking at you, yeah. You get the local sports matches on that thing, Flatfoot. He just looks at you. I don't look. I don't look back at him. I get up and walk in the pawn shop. <laughs> All right. Hey, so these uh, these two uh, these two cops are just standing outside the pawn shop, and they're just watching you guys. And then uh, Caden but, uh, saying something into their their radio. Uh, as as I'm walking in, though, I'd say, hey, Bubba, you Bubba, said something. Bubba's going to stare back at him. B Bubba's going to stare back at him and just occasionally talk to his wrist and never break eye contact with him. <laughs> <laughs> so you stay, you stay outside, do you? <laughs> You stay outside, do you, Bubba? When, when, whenever they do this, Bubba, even if you don't have a radio, do the same thing and mutter yeah. in their heads, make it a psychological game, and stare at them while you do it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, approach. Well, I, I plan on talking into my wrist, even though I'm not even. So, Reggie, there. Reggie, when you, um, when you walk into the pawn shop. Um, there's a moment where the uh, when you're right inside the pawn shop, and the young lad, the assistant, he he looks at you and he sees you, and there's this look of surprise and recognition on your on his face, and he steps over to the middle aged woman and he leans in, and and you hear him whisper, you know, "Mom, that's that's the guy, that's the guy I told you about, that's the guy." And he's pointing at you. <laughs> <laughs> like in like the grocery store as a kid. Do, do, I, do I recognize him? Up. Yeah, yeah. He was the assistant in the in the place ages ago. He, he was working okay. with Bella. But that that's that's it, right? Mm. All right. I just I look at my friends. We need to go. <laughs> it's 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 time to go. Okay. I just shake my head and I walk so, out. So soon? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I didn't even get a chance to really look at the inventory. What did you <sighs> expect to happen? Next time we split. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm walking out that door first. I'm just gonna peel off and away. As you, uh, as you walk out the door, you hear a distant woo 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 of police siren, and these two guys outside the door are looking a little bit more kind of tense. The, the two cops. Damn it! We're not gonna pick any cargo up. <laughs> nope, we sure are not. <laughs> well, oh, oh dear. <clears throat> Orders, Captain. Burn this port. Get ready for the heavy. <laughs> um. All right. Then. So how, I mean, are, how are fast we, can we hoof it out of here? Well, are we committing ourselves to violence is my question. Let me ask you this, Game Master. Is there an unoccupied vehicle on the street? Uh, make a 2d6 roll. If you get 7 plus, there is. Around the corner from the officers. So, one, they don't see what we're doing. And two, they well, don't the, see the, what we're the, doing. <laughs> I got a, I got a 7. Well, you get the impression that if you walk, the, uh, walk away from the officers, well, they will follow you. Yeah, I got a I got a seven exactly. Okay. Well, plus yes, there is an unoccupied vehicle. You also have the you one that need... they came in. <laughs> <laughs> it is valid. Absent the, absent the car keys, you will need a, a mechanic or electrical roll to hotwire it. Okay, oh, audience. I could do that. Any value super chat. And we steal the police car. Otherwise, we're taking. We're gonna try no, and we're actively acquiring. We are not stealing it because we're not taking it with us. We are relocating it. it. We're we're moving it from here to the spaceport. Uh, yes. so, if you guys, yes. if you we guys are couriers. Super, they should pay super, us for this. If you guys, uh, super, anyone super chats ten dollars, then instead of having just two cops in a cop car come as backup. I'll have the special operations group come in a, in a big. Oh, oh, that <laughs> is just wrong. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Against the players. Hey, oh. hey, I tell you what. If, Ouch. If, 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 if anybody $20 super chats, Bubba draws the blade and will stay there to make sure the crew gets to leave and he'll take on all the cops. My heart. <laughs> hey, Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. Nobody's spending any cash. I don't care what happens. No, no I'm not seeing any supers come through. There's a bit of lag, but I honestly don't think anyone is frantically hammering out their uh, PayPal info right now. <laughs> Bubba. No, they just want the dice to do it for us. Yeah. They they kind of feel sad for us. <laughs> We're not going to mess with them. <laughs> all right. Um, so um, okay. you said so there's a hotel now, close by, right? Am I correct? You, you've all stepped outside the pawn shop. Oh yeah, we have. <laughs> We're like, yes. Okay, you're all clustered together outside the pawn shop with these two cops who've backed off to about four meters, uh, standing there looking at you. Uh, still resting their hands on the the holsters. Yeah, Damien. Hey guys, how you doing? Over. Bubba, Quinda. Mm -hmm. Let's skin them. I, I'm just going to casually walk over to the car while they're doing that. And is it unlocked? Which the unlocked car that you see in the street? The yeah, police car. Yeah, yeah, it's unlocked. All right, I'm. Yeah, I'm well, it's got the window down, so you can just reach in and. <laughs> Yeah, I, I oh, just, oh. Down I'm, and, I'm scoping it out, trying to see how how much it would take me to be able to hotwire this sucker. All right. uh, well, you can certainly hotwire any car. It's just a matter of how long it takes you to do it. 30 it seconds. From, it could be anything from 10 seconds to 10 minutes, depending on how well you roll. Because, like, also, you're in a pressure situation where there are armed people around who... Mm -hmm. may have something to say about it. So that um, that can enhance your performance or make it worse. And that, that's Odds what are, when I'm hot wearing it, they're probably not going to be <laughs> conscious. <laughs> I'm moving towards <laughs> the cops. Okay, so you're going in different directions, right? Because basically, here's the pawn shop, right? There's the, the street outside. 
there's the cop car up in the street there's the 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 civilian car down the street so if you move towards the cops you'd be you'd be going away from the rest of the party Mm -hmm. i don't mind i'm just clarifying Mm -hmm. okay okay I'm heading towards the cop car because I want to check it out. I'm just kind of, kind of stroll oh, by to, it and if, look if in. You have to walk past the cops. <laughs> so go towards the cop car. That's fine. Tammy, are you dealing with the cops, or are you are you gonna are you gonna pile in the car with us? I'm gonna pile in the car with you guys. Smart woman. Tammy, you've got electrical, so you can uh, you can hotwire a car as well. Yes. Between oh, the two of us, we are getting this yeah, flipper we're started. Yeah, we're get this going. Tammy, you have the con. <laughs> okay, um, how so Tammy's walking towards, how, how, so Sapphire's walking towards the cop car. Who's joining her? Um, I'm going to, I call out, hey guys, how you doing? What's happening? Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm just taking a stroll. I'm, I had no, all the piled in the civilian car, so unfortunately, that's where I'm at. Okay, so you've gone down south; they're going up north. All right, I'm who's, talking to the who's cops. Who's with Bill's character? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is is anyone is anyone with me? <laughs> I got Quinda with me, and Bubba, Bubba's you with still... me, or are you with yep. the Captain? Bubba ain't moved since. <laughs> The cops came up. I'm still staring at them, talking into my wrist. <laughs> He's the distraction, aka right. comic relief. So Bubba and the the, the Bubba and the uh, captain are there talking to the cops, and um, so uh, uh, who's the cop, cop car? Sapphire and is she on her own? Yeah, I'm going to the cop car. Okay, the cop car's open, and you can easily hotwire it. You think? <laughs> I'm watching the cops to see what they're doing. Otherwise, I mean, if they're kind of watching they're us, they're kind of you. looking in they to see. Oh, yeah, they got their badges. Oh, I am in the car. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah we're we're in there. We are stirring that it. fricker yes. when they're distracted. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gonna start. We're gonna. Get everybody jump in. We're gonna be gone before so they even Sa- know. So Sapphire and Tammy are in the car. Quinda the car. and Linda are talking to the okay, cops. Okay, to clarify, the, the the cop car is a, a regular kind of cop car where there's the, the police seats in the back. It, sorry, in the front and in the back. Um, it, 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 the doors just open from the outside. The doors don't open from the inside, and there's a sort of a cage. In the back, there's regular seats with seat belts and stuff, but there's a kind of a cage so that whoever's in the back can't, you know. Oh, Tammy and I are in the front. Everybody else can be piled yeah. in the back. And oh, yeah. uh, is and there there's a, there's a I mean, we're gonna have the doors open so everybody can jump in and we take off. <laughs> is there a shotgun in the center console? There is. Ooh. Oh yes. <laughs> Makes up for my missing at the pawn shop. Is it loaded? <laughs> Yes. Of course it is. Wow, they are idiots. Um, well, no, because you need to be able to pull it out and use it a, in an emergency. It may not be chambered, but it'll yeah, have weapons chambered. in the magazine. Yeah, rounds of the magazine. Not, I still think that's how loaded, JFK was shot. It's, it's loaded, but it's not chambered. So you have to go at the start. Woohoo! We can do that. All right. We have the technology. Okay. So just, to... just get it started. All right, so, and you're in the car. Okay. Well. Make your getting it started roll. That's All just right. a matter of how long it will take. Unless you 2D? roll two. Yeah, two dice and add your mechanics or electric. Uh, okay. Uh, my mechanics is two. Oh, wait a second. Okay. Let's do this. We can do this. This is probably just about the ATV deposit. We got 12. Uh, got a 12. 12. Awesome. <laughs> All right. If I don't get so it, you, Tammy can. <laughs> you, very, you very quickly get it started. Luckily, there's other. And now, is there other traffic on the street that distracts them? Oh, the, yeah. Any other traffic on the street is obviously covering the sound of the, the engine starting up. The cops don't seem to, you know, they don't turn around in alarm or anything like that. They don't seem to notice. 
<laughs> okay, what are you doing now? What? Do the I'm waving them over. Come on, come on, come on. Back them up. Come over. Okay, so, right, so you guys are standing there with the cops in front of you, and behind the cops, <laughs> Sapphire and Tammy <laughs> pop wide the cop car. Mm -hmm. So you can see that when you look over the police shoulders. <laughs> and, you see the, and you see the ladies uh, waving, waving you over. Oh, okay. I will sprint. I, I, I do my hand across the throat, knock him out, and get over here with my thumb. <laughs> How close Knock are we to out. the cops? Get over here. <laughs> they're, they're about three or four meters away. I just... I, oh, I, they're in melee range. I would like to attain as to why... Why, like, what are they investigating here? Oh, you're asking them what they're investigating? Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to walk up to them from the very beginning. Uh, so that's why I was walking over to them. I want to ask what's going on. You say, uh, we have reason to believe that uh, these two gentlemen here have involvement in crime and crimes. We asked them to identify themselves and they've refused to do so. Okay. And we want um, them to come peacefully with us. Okay. Well, what, and what just, at that moment, of? just at that moment, the uh, other siren comes up. <clears throat> the, the other siren comes up. <laughs> The other police car pulls up in front, in front of um, Tammy up. and Sapphire. Right? Oh. They pull up oh, and they God. park. <laughs> they park in front of you. Uh, Linda. <laughs> yep. Now. Yep. Uh, I take. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a melee a, a uh, Same. brawling attack. Same. Yep. 10 plus 1 for Blade is 11, I guess. Hang on. You've got to roll for initiative first. You've got to roll uh, to see if you get... Uh, we're you're hoping there, surprise first. Surprised. Yes. Okay. Surprised. There's going to be two separate initiatives at this rate because yes. we're in the car dealing oh, with yeah. the car. Yes. And it's two, they're it's dealing two with separate, two separate people. It's two separate conflicts. Though after the first round, it will become one. Because it's only about 20 meters distance, so... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so um, so Reggie and Bubba and uh, the others with them. So roll one d six, and you'll be adding your uh, adding uh, Bubba's tactics. Okay. Does high dex or anything matter? No, it doesn't. But I rolled one, so you'll win. <laughs> win well, initiative. I got a, I got a two. No, you you win initiative. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> you win. I hey, rolled one. Hey, Tammy. <laughs> Yeah. You're a navigator? Do you think that uh, there's enough space that uh, we can hit them, trigger their airbags, and either knock their butts out and I basically hit, hit the corner so it knocks them sideways and maybe puts them into the building? Uh, <laughs> so we knock them out and we knock the vehicle out at the same time? I think we should just try it even if we couldn't do it. <laughs> All right. That, that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is the tabletop role-playing game mentality you should have. Game Master says you don't, uh, well, you know, don't even roll. You don't have a chance. I try anyway. <laughs> hey, the dice gods could be generous, you know? Natural 20 right. opens stuff up. Yep. We got a serious uh, when Midnight Rider stole the uh, police interceptor vibe going in the chat, so that's awesome for you, <laughs> for you Mad Max fans. <laughs> oh dear. All right. So you win initiative against these poor schlubs. Now right. roll your attacks. Sure. So Kinder does a brawling. Yep. Yeah. Start with brawling. I'll go to. Probably go to my cutlass next if I have to. Well, uh, yeah, I'm I'm starting I'm starting with the blade since that's what I've got. Um, well, I don't want to actually kill a cop, but 
I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that even if I was doing an attack with a blade I can just slam the butt uh, sl slam the well, pommel yeah. of it into their head. Use it as a club rather than a blade. Pretty much. You don't want to get well, it uh, off but if it happens it happens. Yeah, Re and remember that um in in Traveler it doesn't make a difference what the type of weapon is. You can beat someone to death. You can shoot someone to death. It's just that yeah. the the uh blades and guns and so on tend to do more damage than hand-to-hand -hand does. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and since, remember, one stat's reduced to zero, you're unconscious. Two stat's reduced to zero, severely wounded. Three stat's yeah. reduced to zero, you're dead. If you're doing a small amount of damage at a time, actually killing someone is a, de a decision that you take rather than the dice take in most right. cases, unless you're really unlucky. Whereas, because you, you're only doing like one dice of damage at a time and they'll have an average of seven in each stat. So it's you have to decide to beat them to death. Whereas like if you're shooting them for four dice of damage or whatever, it might just happen by uh, uh, an accident. It might yeah. be a happy accident or unhappy depending on how you feel, but it happens. So Blade gives me a plus one, I think. I have a strength of okay. six. So you have Blade, all right. You are at short range. That gives you a plus one. Okay. Um, they, um, all right, Blade, um, you've got to require, uh, what's your, re your required strength is five. My strength is six. And your strength is six, so yeah, you, you don't have a bonus or a malice to your Blade, so you got plus one because you're at short range. Um, and, uh, and then plus one from the Blade skill. And they've got jack armor on, so that's uh, no effect with the Blade. So, and then plus one on the skill, so it's plus two. Okay. That no, is no roll Jack. Ten total. Ten total. All right. So you hit them. So you hit the guy and you do two dice of damage. Okay. So it's 2d6. Yeah. All right. Uh, eight. Eight. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, he's still up. Can, can, he can we all. Can, can we all take a minute and just look at this situation from the from the cops point of view they're walking up talking to two guys these women walk out of a pawn shop one steals the car and the rest of them jump the cops <laughs> <laughs> they don't know we're stealing the car they did not see us do this hey my nickname is bonnie <laughs> <laughs> all right they who else tell is, is anyone else later. yeah i, I am punched I punched the Kendra second has, one. Um, I am Kendra heading straight for the police car. car. Kendra has punched a cop. Uh, oh, sorry, Hound. Who punched the cop? One of them punched the cop. Quinda. Quinda, Quinda. yeah. All right. So okay. now, uh, is anyone else having a go? That's your action? That's your surprise action? I presume. Uh, is yep. anyone else having a surprise action? Um, Ricky, your character? Uh, well, my, my character was was doing that. That was the knife. And I presume. That was a knife. Oh, I sorry. That was a knife. Yeah. I oh, yeah, sorry. So now Kinder's, Kinder's having a go. All right. Yep, so make your roll. Okay, well, I, I struck I, 11 natural, and I, I'm a plus two, minus one, yeah. plus yep. one. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> two dice, yep. Okay, five points of damage. Okay. Um, this second guy, he's had too many donuts, um, so he's not that fit. <laughs> The second guy's a bit chubbier. So he goes down like a sack of spuds. Hmm. You just you just punch him. You, you you punch him in the side where his body armor doesn't protect him. And he goes, Ooh! and he falls down unconscious. Oh, <laughs> okay. Good job. All righty. Hey, that makes up for when the guy shot me the last time. Okay. <laughs> The, all right, Tammy, Tammy and Sapphire in the cop car, just oh, north of these two. Are yep. you going to ram the other cop car that's just pulled up? Damn straight. <laughs> okay, floor it. Make you drive. We're, we're going to try to take the corner out so we can like turn it so like they crash into the side of a building or something. Okay, so and, it's just and as, maybe take it out. So rather than waiting for them to pull up and stop right in front of you as they're Oh yeah. As you're approaching. So yeah, because basically you're 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 on the side of the road like this. Um, I'll probably do a better with a couple of books. You're on the side of the road like this. They they come in 
Like that, so <laughs> yeah, we are cool. taking their yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll send them. You'll send Damn them straight. The you'll send them spinning into the road like that. Um, and, and hopefully and into a see, building spin, or or a light right pole around. or something. Okay. Uh, well, make an attack roll. And maybe so we can trigger the airbags to knock their butts out too. Do you, <laughs> um, all right, make a roll. Make a You're driving, control. Tammy. And, and do you have, um, yeah. Okay, and uh, am I adding anything to it? Well, Sapphire, you're the one who's got the driving skill. Oh. No, Tam Tammy is. She's a navigator. No, the driving. And the mechanic. The air, air slash raft. Oh, have. do I? Yeah. Oh, yes, I have air raft. Okay. Yeah, and uh, air raft, they don't exist in this, so it just becomes driving of an appropriate vehicle of your choice. Fine. At the time. Is did this you, the vehicle? Did you notice what he said, driving of an appropriate vehicle? <laughs> yeah. Oh, appropriate. Of your, of your choice at the time. It's like how, you know, in D&D, &D, it says you can know a certain amount of additional languages. Some dungeon masters will require you to um, to list them all at the start of the game. Others will allow you to choose them in play. It's like I, I did that once in a game. I said, oh, yeah, I happen to speak Albert. <laughs> mm. um, and um, it was never useful I... again, but it was useful that time. So you could now uh, say, yeah, I happen to know how to drive ground automobiles as okay. opposed to ATVs or bulldozers or whatever. All right. If you I rolled an 11. Well, hold the 11. phone. <laughs> if you can drive a car, you can drive an ATV. Uh, yes, we you can, but it's a matter of how And a golf well. cart. Because <laughs> driving cart, an yes. ATV is like driving a large four-wheel drive. And I think we can all agree, having seen soccer mums at drop-off, that driving a regular automobile and driving a four-wheel drive are not quite the same skill set. I don't drive at all, so don't look at me. <laughs> Unless it's a stick, they can drive it. Just not yeah. necessarily well. Okay. But You're on 11. That's, that's a good hit. So as they're yes. coming up, yes. so as, as they're coming up like this, and you go, boom, and they spin around. <laughs> it's to the side. So their passenger side is now next to your driver's side. Okay, so roll one dice of damage against each of the two police officers in that vehicle as they get okay. knocked around and the airbags I go got off a and stuff. four, and yep. then the and other one? Another. Yep. Uh, that is a three. Three, okay. <laughs> all right. So they're rather stunned and they're, they're covered in all the dust of the airbags and stuff. <laughs> it's done for the moment. All right. Next Mission round. Accomplished airbags. Next round, initiative. Okay, so this, the status is the party is completely unharmed, except the police vehicle that Tammy and Sapphire are in um, is a bit munted at the front. No! <coughs> um, there is a guard at the front, a cattle guard at the front of a police car. It's there. Yeah. There's crash bars. True, true. They're um, designed for this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's rather... Yeah, so it'll it'll show some ill effects anyway. Um, so you and uh, down on uh, Reggie and, and Bubba's side, you have got um, two police officers. One is down, knocked unconscious. The other <laughs> one is a bit bashed up, but uh, still conscious and up. I'm throwing the it in reverse. Side, there's a there's a car and that's a bit bashed them up. around. <laughs> it's a bit bashed around. Um, and then there's a, another cop car that's been collided into and spun around, and the police go, whoa, 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 and trying to figure out what's going on. How well the cops figure out what's going on will be determined by um, an, an initiative roll. Let's see if they can I'm, break out I'm a surprise. I'm throwing this in reverse, and I'm picking up the group, and we're out of here. I got a four. Okay, we need to make another initiative roll to see if you guys maintain surprise. Got a four. Four. Um, you've got tactics. They've got tactics. Okay, it's simultaneous. I have a five. Right, so the police. Or are we going to? Just well, it's simul it's, it's it's now just like I said. After the first round, it was going to be the whole party working together. Group initiative. Okay. So so one initiative for the party. Got it. Yeah, one initiative for the party. Okay. Okay. So uh, at the moment, it's it's now tied, and it's going to be simultaneous actions from now on. All right. So. Um, 
you're gonna uh, you're gonna floor it from now on, uh, the car, are you, Sapphire? Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> we're what, backing up. Away? We're no, we're backing up to grab them, and then we're getting out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, what are you going to do? The the lads on the other side. Uh, sorry, Kinda and uh, Reggie and Bubba. What are you on down the other side? Uh, Kinda is going to draw her cutlass and go after the remaining. <laughs> The remaining time. Only Tamley to open the doors if you can. <laughs> yep. And uh, what about you, Ricky? What's your character doing? Well, um, I'm going to ensure that that cop goes down, um, unless I can Tokyo drift my way into that cop car. But I don't think I can. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make sure that cop goes down. If the windows well, can open, I'm a... opening them. They can duke the hazard in. <laughs> yeah, the duke the hazard in. That's just like a, a dex check or something. That's yeah. That's that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, can I grab? Um, I'm actually going to try and grab uh, the firearms if I the firearm off the one out top if I can. Okay. All right, so the, the cop who is still up is uh, stepping back and drawing his firearm, and the cops who are in the car have recovered themselves, and they're exiting the vehicle and drawing their weapons. That's taking them the round to do, to exit the vehicle and draw their weapons. The one who's backing off can draw his weapon and fire it this, this, uh, this round. Okay. All right, but everyone acts simultaneously. <laughs> yep. All right, so the one who are, the ones who are attacking the lone cop, make your rolls. Okay. Yeah, eight total. Uh, yep, that'll hit. My I roll damage. a nine. Yep, he goes. To, he he will go down at the end of the round. Okay. Cool. Let's see. Ooh. Six damage total, if it matters. So my nine turns yeah. into a twelve to hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, turns into a well. Be backed up. Turns into a fourteen to hit. Yeah, but you can step forward anyway. Well, good. no, that 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 goes from close to short range. Yeah, no, but you, you can yeah. step forward anyway. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. No, I, I have to be at short range. Mm. Close is like body contact. Yeah. Unless he spends the entire round just moving, uh, yeah. you can just follow him, basically. Okay, let's see here. You, you know, the way I read it is, 11 so, for yeah, me. You've, got your, you've got your close, your short, your medium, and so on, mm -hmm. ranges. If you're moving within that range, it doesn't take an action. But right. if you go from one to the other, from close to short, from short to medium or whatever, it takes an action. Mm -hmm. That's the way I, I tend to run it. I think that's reasonable. Right. You um, took 11 points notes? from me. All right. So, so this guy is going down. But as he's going down, um, he, fires. He, he shoots at the captain, gets six and five. That's 11. That'll hit. The hell's he shooting at me for? <laughs> I would think he'd you're be the, shooting. You're at, the mouthing one. You're the mouthing one. I think one he'd want to shoot at the one of the two that are attacking him. Yep, but he's shooting at the mouthy one who appears to be in charge. Okay. Super fat to not have me shot. <laughs> well, yeah, you're diving want, into the back of the vehicles. So. We want you shot, you big baby. <laughs> oh, I'll take revolver. you out of here. Shot. Firing his revolver. I get four. Six and five. Uh, so that's 15 minus three, 12 points of damage. And I can just spread that, um, spread that over my stats as I see fit. Yeah. Uh, doesn't the first one automatically hit all endurance? Yeah, the, for, so yeah, the first, first one attack. hits endurance. First endurance uh, hits endurance. And if there's anything left over, it flows onto something else of your choice. Uh, okay. Now you only get to spread after you've been hit the first time. Okay. Yeah. 
And that was, a, I'm but sorry. You're falling that, into the back seat. So that was 12. We'll, we'll haul your ass out of here. All right. And I'll split the others up. We'll do seven and five. Okay. Yeah. So Reggie takes a shot. Boom. Takes a shot to yep. the guts, falls down. Hit right in my endurance. And the Ugh. captain takes a nap. <laughs> no, I'm not unconscious. All right. The other two cops have got out of their vehicle and drawn their weapons, and uh, they're aiming at uh, the ladies in the stolen police car. At Thelma and they're the not ladies. stunned. <laughs> they're not stunned. No. After getting smacked they, by an airbag. Well, they, yeah, Last round, well, they, they were stunned. They took damage. Yeah, they took damage. Oh. That's how the. I mean, the, there's no stun in traveler. It's just we can kind of duck. And and just kind of look. <laughs> <laughs> we're ducking and looking just yeah, enough. Like, like, well, it'll hinder your driving a bit, but you know we're gonna like reverse and like smack into the car again to see if they're close enough to the door that the their car <laughs> takes them out. Well, see, the advantage of a law level, low law level world, is that. It does happen from time. You know, that idea that an armed police society is a polite society is complete bollocks. Therefore, the police car will have bulletproof glass and it will not bulletproof, but bullet resistant glass and it will have ah. bullet resistant um, um, uh, cladding uh, you know, panels yeah. and stuff like that. So we'll duck so, and it'll <laughs> spider, but it should come through right much, away. Yeah. If, it, if it hits a, the uh, glass, yeah. Um, oh, but I'm... So, we're, I'm still flooring it to hit the back of their car again to see if the door is like crushed. Well, they, their car's right to next knock to you. Them out. Their car is right next to you. So you ah, have to go forward uh, and right okay. to strike their car. Uh, and in doing so, you might crush one of the cops between your two cars. Or you can go backwards <sighs> and pick up your friends. I thought you were going backwards. We're going backwards and picking up our friends. We are out okay. of here. <laughs> Do you think that we can just, you know, outgun the cops here? Or, like, Ooh. what the hell are we doing, guys? Like, why pick this fight? I mean, we really don't want to off them, but... This no, we don't. We just want to get uh, out of here. If, if we're committing to violence... Like, like we, we've already done the whole violence thing here, because we showed up in this world. But, like, what the hell? So, if we're committed to violence, we're committed to violence. Fine. It's like revisiting a bandit's hideout after you've already done the quest associated with it in a, in a Skyrim. <laughs> Pretty much. Fine. Why am I fighting gonna, you guys again? We're going to back up, grab the guys, and if they're still on the way, we're running them over. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you back up. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, so as you uh, as you back up and the, you're getting into the vehicle, the police I, I, are I, I, firing in your general direction. Okay, they're firing in general direction. They, they, they've seen their two mates going down, going down, so they no longer care about collateral damage. <laughs> uh, I think Bubba's trying to say something, though. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I I I have a question. Um. Do I have to have the mechanics or electrics uh, skill try hotwire hot, uh, hot the civilian car? Yes. And, you know, otherwise you could just get lucky and they've left their keys in the Oh, you shade. do have to. Have them. Yeah. Yeah, dude, just, just, just get me to the, get, get me to the stolen police car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in this round, Okay, well, but, 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 but we'll, 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 we'll back up with these hands up and throw the captain over his shoulder and just start walking toward the cop car. <laughs> well, you don't have to because it's, it's going to pull up right next to you. So the Even better. Pulls up Perfect. Right, right next to you. You can just pick him up and throw him through the, the thing. So uh, for you, it's just a, uh, a strength check. To pick him yeah, up we got the windows him. open. I'm physically pushing Six through hazard style. I just I just grunt as he's getting ready to throw me in. Lift with your legs, not with your back. <laughs> now, um, again, in order to actually pick him up and, and shove him through the window is not a problem. The problem comes when you're trying to do it quickly while being fired on. 
So how, how quickly can you do it? All right, so you've got a, a strength of 10. Um, so, yeah, roll under 10. Uh, if you roll under 10 on your on 2d6, then you do it in one, in one round easily. And all of this because our captain well, had to uh, be an uh, asshole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 roll, I rolled an 8. He was so. the one that got shot. He so. rolled an 8. Okay, <laughs> good. All right, so uh, you see Bubba just like, Shoving the guy, you know, shoving the captain in through the back window of the, the police car. Is anyone going around to the right hand side of the vehicle? They drive on the left hand side of the road here. Is anyone drive, going to the right hand side of the vehicle to jump through the window there? Um, I want to reach down and attempt to take one of the officer's weapons. Same. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Ricky was doing that last round. That was a yeah. dex check. Again, doing it you know, in the middle of a combat. How quickly? Well, okay. Roll under my decks. Yeah. Success. I'm rolling my eyes. Come on, guys. Yeah. It's time to go. All right. So you, you had spent that round grabbing, uh, retrieving his weapon. Yeah, he went for the one that was in the holster. I'm going to go for the one the guy used. Yeah, you can grab that. You don't need a, a roll to that. You just so do that. He's already so you, taken down. You, know, you, you did the bash, and then you just grab. Yeah. All right. So uh, nobody has, nobody's jumping on the right-hand side of the vehicle then? Well, since now we have the turn free, may as well. Yeah. Okay. So you have the turn tree. All right. So um, who's going in first? The, one more person can jump in. Cause I'll let you go, Rick. Right hand side of the okay. All right. So, uh, Ricky, you, you jump in, do a dex check. Dex of four is under my eight. So that's a success. Awesome. So you jump in through the, the, the window. The, the, you, you see her feet go in. <laughs> you see the shoes go in. <laughs> you go in and find yourself on top of the bleeding captain. <laughs> Just arrange the body in the right way, unconscious body in the right way, drag it back. Remind There's just room for three the in the back. <laughs> There's room for three of you in the back. Um, so that, that so might be Tammy, a open the door and let's let's get a, another person in here. This, this Bubba can ride on six, top if we need. Okay, there's a light a, bar up there he can hang normal, on. <laughs> this is like a normal sedan in its layout. So there's room for two people in the front. It's, and three oh, okay. people in the back. And there so we can are... fit one more in the back and somebody on top. <laughs> yes. You've clearly never, ever taken a road trip with college students, then. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We will, we will but were any of the or college seen students... clowns in a car. Ricky, and we are the clowns. college students built like Bubba? It doesn't matter. We can pull the unconscious <laughs> captain over our lap. <laughs> He can literally throw them on the floorboards and use them as a footrest. Yeah, really. He won't. He won't. Trust me. He won't be complaining. There's a yeah. back okay. deck. The that police is are a standing. Complete optional the... bench. <laughs> okay. So the 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 other two cops that you rammed into are standing in the street with their legs spread, both hands on their, their pistols, firing at you dramatically, like T.J. Hooker. Um, one of them looks a bit like William <laughs> Shatner, actually, and then boom, 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 oh, blazing light. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Uh, Does he have a shirt on? Fire. <laughs> what? Um, all right. Random who they're going for. Number six. Oh, Tammy. That, yep. Makes sense. They go through the window. And number four. Who's the fourth one? Bubba. Oh, uh, yep. So while Bubba's carrying the captain. <laughs> all right. Let me check the ranges and all the rest. Okay. Just, just to let you know, Jim, if, if they hit me, Bubba's breaking out Lucille and blood will be shed. <laughs> Actually, if they hit you, I think Bubba's going to be unconscious. All right. They're at medium range, so that's minus three. They've got a skill. That's plus one. You're wearing no armor, so that's minus two. Uh, um, um, and you, you're wearing no armor, so that's minus one. All right, so they need nine plus. Blam, blam, and they miss you. And then Tammy, blam, blam, <laughs> miss. So rounds go bing, bing, go into the background, and then I roll for, does it hit a bystander? Oh, you hear a scream in the background. <laughs> and you hear a smash tingle as it goes through uh, shop window glass. <laughs> and you hear screaming. You glance back, and there's some old lady who goes, oh, and <laughs> falls to the ground. Okay. 
I, I shouldn't say I shouldn't suggest it would be funny, it's, but it would be funny if it had been uh, if it had been the uh, the pawn shop owner's wife. Uh, <laughs> come on. wife? If it this had been Ballard. Ballard's wife. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. All right. So you now is um, is the other police car drivable? Uh, yeah, but there's two cops next to it who are shooting at you. Oh, that can be we dealt will with. take care of that. Oh, <laughs> we go through. That. Okay. okay. All right. So who isn't in the vehicle now? We've got... Um, all right. So I think there's, there's Tammy and Sapphire are in the front. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, Reggie and Ricky who are in the back. So that leaves Bubba and uh, Kinder. Yep. I'm still outside. outside. Yeah. So are you going to try to... Uh, are you going to floor it and run over the cops or just piss off or let the other party members in the vehicle? How badly damaged is the glass on this vehicle? Will it take a couple uh, more, more hits it, or it, no? Yeah, you can take a couple more hits. Yeah, the, the first one. Okay, is sort of I'll signal them. Get in here. We got to go. <laughs> All right. You're just near the corner, so you can be sort of slowly pulling around the corner. Okay. Let's go, Bubba. As you, as you do that, and then they can still try to get in. They'll just have a minus one. Uh, sorry, minus two to their decks as, as to, to get in. This whole thing is a shambles. Get your so asses in here. It's time to go. <laughs> okay. Bubba. Slackers. Bubba draws are you, all right, with are you just are you and he's remaining mad because the car are you remaining got shot at him guys? and do nothing. Bubba, get now, in the car. What the, what the vehicle's doing is most important. So wait, I need to clarify. Is the vehicle staying still or are you moving backwards around the corner? Um, we're staying still just to give them the best chance right, to get their asses okay, Bubba, in here. Bubba, you've drawn you're drawing Lucille, or are you going are you gonna get into the vehicle? You can lean out after we're going, okay? Just no, get your I'm, I'm ass in here. Oh, get your ass I'm in the seat. car. I was doing nothing, and they shot at me when I was doing nothing. Get your ass in the car. It's going to be a 300-pound 300, 300 pound guy. It's only fair. They, they, okay, at this point now, buddy, you're getting on top of the car, Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get into the car. <laughs> I mean, I'm with All right, Bubba so Kinder, with... make your dex check to get into the car quickly in this round. Um, I rolled a five. My oh, dex good. is a That's... seven. Yep, underneath. No worries. Okay. You get in the car swiftly. If Bubba's drawn his thing. We're starting to roll. <laughs> Bubba's drawing his weapon. I'm picturing like gun. Like Billy at the end of Predator, you know. Tammy, in. get him on top of the car. And... Tell him it's go time. <laughs> get on Honk top the of the car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the back is, is occupied now. It's going to get a bit squeezy if any more people get in the back. You can do it. It'll just be a bit squeezy. <laughs> like. But Bubba's fixing to kill these two cops and take their car is what's fixing to happen. Please super chat. I just lost all my monetization on this one. <laughs> Bubba, we're gonna have what is this? What is this traveler? Police brutality edition. Sorry, Jimmy. No, it's not. This is um player brutality edition, and that's um, every edition of every game. Hey uh DM. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, they shot at me first. Um, <laughs> We're not trying to kill him. We're just I'll, trying to get away. <laughs> I'll get out of the car and advance firing. <sighs> I mean, look, if we came to this stupid rock for no good reason, we started a fight because the captain was being a dick. You don't know that. That's valid. But your character does not know that. That's va that's valid, but I will find out and I will kick your ass. <laughs> Regardless, we came here to deal with Ballard's BS. And now it's about y'all came, came out of the Are you taking stop, the like second car? You can meet us at the ship. Okay. Exactly. That's like I, at this point, at this point, I'm shooting someone. <laughs> well, you can open the door and you can use that as a as a shield, as long as the vehicle's not moving fast. 
you can use that door as, a, as, as far as i'm aware and the that, vehicle's still not even moving so yeah well, but i'm just saying if it starts moving because it may do so in the next yeah. round <laughs> i'm fine with that i'm i'm looking i'm looking to cover the ground to move towards the other cops firing if i can okay so you, you get into the you get into the vehicle, you're piling through the window, and then you go, no, fuck this. <laughs> Open the door again. Yep. Well, in fact, yeah, you cannot you, you cannot open the door. You cannot open the door. The window's down, right? Yeah. You reach out yeah, the, the window, window's you down. grab the handle. You, you can't pull. open the door if the people in the front let you. The people in the front have to flip a little switch. Oh, I'm keeping it you locked. Can out. Not get you out can the jump door. out the window. You can then jump can I, out the window. Then can I at least it. shoot them? You, you can lean out and shoot them all you I'm want. Going, I'm going to give Bubba a fighting shot here. That's my goal. Okay. You can lean all out right. and so shoot all you want. We got gun. a couple windows. Tammy, if you got a gun, go for it. Now, what are you I'll doing, I'll take a pot shot as we about, go by myself. You're about 30 meters away, Bubba. What are you doing? Well, I'm... I've got Lucille drone. I'm charging them and yelling, you shot at me. Now it's my turn to kill you. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's your, um, Oh, you've got good dexterity. Yeah. You'll be able to get to them this, uh, um, by, uh, the beginning of next round. So Bubba you'll spend two against a one. Running. Come on. Kill me here. Round running at them. <laughs> All right. So you go running at them. And then, and so one of them will shoot at you, and the other one will continue shooting at the police vehicle. So you go running at the one who shot the grandma by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> grandma got run over by a reindeer. Okay, so as you go running up, he fires on you. Oh, sorry. What's the what's the vehicle doing? <sighs> Damn it! How far away are we from the cops? 25, 30 meters. Ah, damn you, Bubba. We're going to stay still right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So Bubba goes running ahead. I don't need people gonna, like flying out of the car because they're I'm leaning going, out firing. I'm going to <laughs> lean out the window and I'm going to aim at William Shatner and fire at him. <laughs> Oh, right, so. And he's gonna be pausing between each word. No, don't <laughs> shoot at you. Ah. Me. Hurt my friends. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> All right. So. Um, all right, so you've got the, the captain's wounded in the middle, and you've got you, you guys leaning out either side of the vehicle. Uh huh. Firing at him, uh, firing at, um, at TJ Hooker. <laughs> so... <laughs> We're covering every decade, huh? <laughs> yeah, we are. All right. Um, okay, so uh, resolve your actions. So TJ fires at, at the vehicle. Boom, boom. It just uh, now he spider webs the glass. I got a 10 on die. Okay. My dex is 8, if that matters. Okay, so let's see. Um, what are you firing? Uh, that you police get? firearm. You said you meant uh, so that's a revolver. revolver. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a revolver. Yep, so you're at medium range, yep, so you've got minus three. Do you yep. have guns revolver? Nope. I do have a high okay, dash, so, though, if it matters. Okay, so you've got a base zero, uh, so that becomes minus three. Um, advantageous dexterity with a revolver is nine. Do you have uh, nine eight. Even eight. Okay, so it's not good enough. So you've got minus three. So seven. Um, and they got jack armor. Um, which gives you a plus one, so it becomes minus two. So, so eight. yeah, yeah, eight. Yep, so you hit him, you hit TJ. Cool, 3d6, 2d6, what three, 3d6 minus three. All right, 10. 10, okay, that's with the minus three, yeah, yep, 
Yeah. Okay. Ooh. So he'll take 10 points of damage. All right. My um, shot missed. Yeah, your shot missed. Okay, Correct. so TJ spiderwebbed your windscreen. Um, and now, Baba. All right. So that's uh, minus three. He's wearing no armor. Minus two plus a skill. That's minus one. Right. If eye rolls can scream, that's what I'm doing. If... All righty. Bubba gets hit. Four, if I three, find out six, that this is the three, captain's 12. fault, I'm killing Nine points of damage, Bubba. It comes first to your endurance. Um, you've got endurance of 10, so that'll take it down to one. <laughs> so he's still going, still up. <laughs> Barely, but, you know, it sort of takes the wind out of him. Oh, sorry, no, you've got a jam card? No, I'm wrong. Here. I'm wrong. You, uh, sorry, you've got uh, strength, dexterity. So you've yep. got AA3, so 10, 10, 3. You've got, dex uh, you've got endurance of 3. So Bubba goes down. Ah. Correct. <laughs> so Damn Bubba it. goes running goes running forth with Lucille. Ah. This and is falls. why I wanted to get out of the car. <laughs> yeah. um. Okay. TJ, go, TJ Hooker goes down. Um, his partner, the handsome Hispanic looking guy, uh, he's still up. Rico. His name is Rico. That's wrong. I'd forgotten. I haven't seen that show for ages. <laughs> Rico is still up. Miami voice, huh? <laughs> I am flooring the car and aiming for him. <laughs> You're going to run him down. Already. Oh, I'm swerving around our fallen comrade who I'm eye rolling at and I'm gonna... <laughs> All right. Now just going Son forward, of a you don't need bitch. to make a roll. The main you, you need to make a first roll to miss Bubba, because Bubba <laughs> is on the road in front of you. And it's only 30 meters distance, and you're trying okay. to go fast enough to knock somebody down. All right. So I make first first roll to not hit Bubba and second roll to hit Rico. Okay, so eight is my first roll. Yeah, you don't hit Bubba. <laughs> you just miss him. <laughs> He's down on the ground. <laughs> and you, you just skate past his head. <laughs> the rubber goes. And, and, you don't fall I a, and I got a 10. <laughs> a 10. Okay. So the cop goes <laughs> across your, um, the front of your vehicle. And he takes, say, three dice of damage. Now make up four dice. <laughs> four dice of damage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I lost one. <laughs> Hold on, it's got to go. Okay. Uh, that is 15. <laughs> 15. Okay. Yeah. So he, he goes plump onto the front of your vehicle and he rolls off and he's completely unconscious and out of it. All okay. Right, so you've now got. Four okay, down so I top. stop. You've got Let two down. The car, Reverse please. to Bubba. Two so down we can player characters and four in down. the car. Let can... me out of the car. I have electrical. Yep. Okay, I unlock well, the so car. Thank you. So I unlock the car so they can pull them in or whatever they're doing so we can get Quinda, out of here. Quinda, yes. do you want? I'm going with you. You okay. boost the car, I'll drag him in. Okay. Sound good? Sure. All right. And in the meantime, I'm going to reach down and grab the two cops' guns. Yep. Actually, question. What's your strength? Me? Yeah. Eight. No, uh, I'll boost the car. You drag okay. him in. Okay. My strength is six. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I'll grab the guns, make sure I pick up Lucille. Okay. And drag, you drag and him. Drag you leave a hand. blood trail on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you drag, this is drag Dumb bombing. shit. You... <laughs> drag him into the, to the back boot. <laughs> you chuck Lucille onto, onto the back of him. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's Damn a it. shotgun in the front of this vehicle too. Uh, okay. Yeah, you don't that have to hop, you don't have to hop wire this one. Um, you see the the keys. Cool. Um, T TJ's got the keys of the vehicles on his belt. Yeah, because we piece. rammed it while it was still running. I'm taking. I was about to say, did he have time to take them out of the thing, or did he just leave them there? No, actually, yeah, he just would have left them in there. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> the airbag. Poof. I'm taking that shotgun. <laughs> yeah, you have to like push the airbag down to be able to drive. Yeah. <laughs> and the other vehicle, you're going to have to kick the windscreen out to be able to, unless you drive backwards all the way. 
but otherwise you'll have to kick the windscreen out to be able to see where you're driving. Okay, so we've collected everything. We've we've got everybody in. We've got the cars running. There's Let's all this go. screaming and people running and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, the normal You, you hear more sirens. Let's <laughs> more go. Sirens. And a couple yeah. of ambulance sirens too, you think. Yeah, the normal thing when we adventure. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as as soon as they're good, I am putting it back in gear. We're out of here. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. Where are you guys going now? Uh the uh ship. Think, yeah, we need to get to the ship so we Yeah, so we can get out of here. <laughs> Do not <laughs> This is now one of those worlds we can never come back to. <laughs> we are marking this one off of our chart. Does not exist. <laughs> if just anybody very lets friendly. Me, if anybody lets me know that this is the captain's fault, I will personally kick his ass. <laughs> the moment he wakes up. I was in the store. I it was just bubbing him. I know. I came out to this. I'm giving I'm giving the crew a thorough hiding at the end of this. She, she Linda is pissed. <laughs> okay. Do we get back to the ship? Yep. So you burn on down the road. You get back to the ship. Uh, make a two d six roll to to see if anyone's you know like the police choppers come in or something like that. <laughs> it's essentially a, a luck roll. I rolled an eleven. 11. Okay. So you hear a police chopper floating around. <laughs> and um, you, you look out the back window and you see it following you. In my mind, I said, 10 or above, the, the chopper finds them. <laughs> so nice. the chopper's following you all along. Okay. So you're burning all down the street and two stolen, bashed up police cars, the police chopper following them. I never expected to travel. It's a chopper, though. Grand <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when we, when, we, when we woke up this morning, it was just, you know, let's be GTA. It'll be fine. <laughs> I am installing a remote control start for the ship. <laughs> <laughs> that way when we come in hot, we can roll right in and so, take off. <laughs> when we when we come in, I'm going to mount that, that turret, or I'm going to mount the laser for it, and I'm going to blast that sucker out of the sky. <laughs> that's assume uh that's assuming it gets within the firing arc. <laughs> I will do my damnedest. <laughs> okay. So we get back to the ship. We drag everybody off, take all of our gear that we wanted to that we stole. Yep. <laughs> Actively stole, acquired. Maybe, you know, found. Actively yeah. acquired. And if there's any extra ammunition in the vehicle, grab that as well. Yep. We've repurposed it. Yes. Drag okay. our bodies. All right. So you go burning up to the ship in your stolen police cars. Yes. <laughs> with the chopper still <laughs> following you. And um, like next to the warehouse is a Land Rover. And on the sand side of the Land Rover, there's a big, there's a Commonwealth flag. All the stars around, right? The circle of stars of the Commonwealth flag flag uh -huh. and um there's a guy leaning on the side of the uh on the side of the vehicle if he's here to get <laughs> taking him, him out <laughs> I know, right now. You recognize him. You recognize him. he is Reckon the he's the commonwealth marshal that you met back on Lieber. <laughs> the one we he's tried to get a date were, with the, the one that you reported Dullard to. <laughs> and he's just leaning on the vehicle and he sort of, he looks unsurprised <laughs> as you come rolling up in the stolen police cars. <laughs> and with a police chopper. And he says, got into some trouble with the local law enforcement, have you? Ah, <laughs> uh, you could say that. <laughs> Um, yeah, you don't need anything from the warehouse, so you could just like say you could say that oh, and then pull off in your police cars and go straight to your ship, which is like I said. Damn straight. 
<laughs> as we're driving, we're like stripping the stuff out like of everything so it's fast as possible. He does say, Car just ship like out of here. But and what word would that be, sir? If he wants to have a word, he can get in. <laughs> he, he glances up at the chopper and he says, I don't think that would be a good idea. All righty. Well, we'll catch you in the next stop. <laughs> All righty. All right. So um, he, he's staying there while. Uh, all right. So your your police vehicles go up to the, the ship. Um, the uh, the the ships. After we're safely bay. in, oh. after we're safely on our thing, I am deleting the coordinates of this planet from the computer. <laughs> Throw away the jump tights. <laughs> Put a great big red mark on this thing. Says interdicted. Do no, not go those coordinates near. are gone. Those coordinates are gone. We are not even risking it. If we don't know they're there, we won't come here. <laughs> All righty. Accidents happen. I am avoiding the accident. I mean, look so, at yeah, what we do with Bubba. The, 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 you've remote controlled the, the cargo bay so that the crane comes out and they can lift you back into it. I, I kind of wish I was conscious. I would love to know what he wanted to talk to us about, but <laughs> you had to go and mouth off to a cop. There's no time. We're out of here. <laughs> We're on borrowed time because we have that stupid drone following us. No, that's it's a man. A it's a police helicopter. Oh, helicopter. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> if it gets in the way, we're taking it out. <laughs> Assuming we can, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. um, you uh, you get into the ship. Uh, I mutter cusses to... every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to stow your captain and, and Baba. Uh, now, do you have enough people to be able to? Damn it. To, Carry to them to sick the bay. sick bay. Is Benjo and Jaquel um, uh, there going? What happens? Are we going to get some sick leave, uh, some uh, shore leave, or what? What's going on? Why is uh, it uh, uh, <laughs> What happened to that vehicle? Why are you in a police car? <laughs> Only if you want a vacation in what the Gray Bar Hotel. Here, stow the stuff. What's all this chatter I'm hearing on the radio? Our unconscious people. Play? We are out of here. Guys, what's going on? I asked myself that the same thing. <laughs> we'll tell you later. Alrighty, who's in charge of the ship now? <laughs> Must be Jane. Tammy's Jane. She's the navigator. Third in charge. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yep. What are you Jane, doing? Let's get us out of here. <laughs> okay. I I definitely agree on that. <laughs> Alrighty, Dumb so shits, gotta... we have to haul their asses out of here. Come on! <laughs> the moment the captain's not comatose, I'm getting a thorough reckoning. <laughs> Alrighty, so you strap them into their bunks, I presume, the, the uh, wounded yeah. guys. Yes. Alrighty, and you warm up the ship, you're going through the, the pre-flight checks and all the rest. Some police cars show up, and the chopper shows up. And the uh, we're pulling out fast over, doing it. We're uh, the, flying um... through <laughs> <laughs> the um, yeah, you, you can rush. This through isn't them, the first there's... rodeo we've had to take off fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hopefully they don't get and too the, close the to chopper the over both the loudspeaker and the emergency channel is telling you to stand down your ship or you will be fired on. <laughs> and then blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yada yada yada. Been there before. Yeah. As far as you know, have as far a as you know, Gibson. As far as you know, Gibson doesn't have any system defense boats. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's we'll wouldn't stop us in. anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, so you just ignore the messages on the emergency channel. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, think. <laughs> okay, hopefully, these guys aren't dumb enough to get inside the blast radius of the engines. Well, I think, we're not uh, doing the Han Solo, though, we're not shooting our own <laughs> instruments. <laughs> It wasn't his instruments, though. That was somebody else's. He'd never do that. True. True. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, a police special operations group uh, vehicle shows up and they come running out and one of them's got a repelling gun with a, <laughs> a big grapnel hook on it. Yeah, that's going to work real well, buddy. <laughs> I think he's hoping to enter it. Water the, ski in, in space. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so it's going to be a matter of they're going to attempt to do an aggressive breach of your craft. And yep. you're going oh, to attempt I've, to take I've, off before they can do so. <laughs> I've rigged this thing. They're not the going. The moment in. we hit the torch, they better be moving. <laughs> or else yeah. they're going to be. <laughs> oh, they'll be Krispy torched. creams. Krispy creams. <laughs> yeah. Well, the takeoff is like a regular chemical rocket, but yeah, it will still kill them. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it won't uh, vaporize. All right. So um, it's basically just dice versus dice because. Like I said, can you you can you take it off quicker than they can um, oh. <laughs> get up on the side and start breaching? Yep. Okay. So two d six versus two d six. I got five and two seven. I have ten. Ten. Okay. <laughs> so he's still sort of setting up and, and setting up the guy, and you you start rumbling and uh, they see the engine exhaust coming out, so they jump in their vehicles and they piss off. <laughs> I give them hand signals like Top Gun. <laughs> you said get out right away. <laughs> yeah. Good job. All right. And you blast off from Gibson. And I am building a remote start for this ship. <laughs> According to the map, the only place we have to go will be Clark. And we I somehow think they might Clark, figure that we? out. Well, no, I mean, the theoretically, we could go to Leguin, Leguin, Lieber, or Haldeman. But for us, Clark is the only option. <laughs> oh, the only place we haven't done something yet. Yeah, I still think they haven't. <laughs> I still think they could figure that part out. Probably I like it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's a moon, we can get some more water. We can just we don't have to stop. We can just keep going. It does have a gas giant. Let's do that. So it also has a naval base, and it's a Class A starport. So. Well, if they have a naval base, we probably do not want to stop because these people are going to be like, eh! Yeah, because the Yen thing could so, so we'll make ourselves place. scarce. Well, whose navy to... is it? Well, first off, we got to get there. Let's start there. Yeah. <clears throat> Once we okay. get to the system, we can figure it from that point. So you and take off. Once everything's initially... calmed down. I am Initially, sterilizing just... everything that came on board. <laughs> Initially, you're just in orbit around uh, Gibson. Mm -hmm. uh, even better than Bounty Hunter's uh, mm -hmm. wave. Even better. Um, you're about to find out. So initially, you're just in orbit around Gibson, and you do a proximity check. And you get a signal there's a, a system defense boat. And when you look at the transponder, it is... A familiar system defense boat. It's the Josephite ship Hamburg. And it has a lot stronger radar now. And it has a slightly altered drive signature as well. It's the, uh, yeah, it's the JS Hamburg. They're the ones who had fired at you when you were exiting from Lieber. Yep. Just before you jumped. And they're the ones who put missiles in your hull and uh, destroyed or put into space your ATV, bits of your hull, and the AI. Yep. So we see them. Have they seen us? 
they will very probably have seen you. Yeah, because they're doing they they've got their active radar going on. Yeah, it's a it's a military boat. I'm almost a hundred percent sure they've seen us. Can yeah. we outrun them? But you you think that it's been upgraded since you saw them last, which was you last saw them. This was, an a, this was a Halderman uh, uh, on day. Uh, it, well, they're a Halderman ship, but they, they you met them at Lieber. right? Because they were a yeah. ship, yeah. So you last met them at uh, day one eighty one, and it's now day two seventy two. So it's ninety days later, ninety odd days later. So how did an uh, SDB is not jump capable normally? Well, it wasn't when you saw it, no. Okay. As a, uh, what a, I, did I not say? They seem to have enhanced. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's... Okay. Not going there. <laughs> Is there well, any possibility that we can outmaneuver them or outrun them? I well, last time you had it. to go. Last time you had to go full belt six G. And even then, they were like they were pelting you with missiles, and you were getting struck in that. Yeah. yeah, we're basically dead in the water. I recommend we attempt a boarding action. We can't fight them at range. We got to yeah. get close. It's the only shot we've got. For mm -hmm. once, listen to the gunny. Grab him by the belt buckle, punch him in the face. Yep, and we're down two people, so we've got it's four of us. Yep. Would you rather be space dust? I I don't want to fight these guys at range. I'll take them up close. All right. So lock and load, put all kinds of put all our gear on, get ready for a fight. Then see what they want to do. Have they are they talking to us? <laughs> all right. This um so as you fire up, you hear this message. And it's a rather robotic voice that says, <clears throat> uh, uh, what do you call guys called? Uh, eminent domain. Ship yeah. eminent domain. Shut down your engines. Prepare to be boarded. Sure. Absolutely. As I said, it's a rather robotic voice. Do it. Shut so it down. Fighting robots next. <laughs> Anyone here a fan of Fred Subberhagen's Berserker novels? Because <laughs> you oh, no, don't do that to <laughs> us. <laughs> That's why you don't mess with AI, man. <laughs> Shut them down. Shut them. Let's go. Shut them all down. Hurry. <laughs> Yeah. I'll start loading slugs. Wouldn't you would okay. wouldn't you want uh um uh flechettes on board to you know I, I this is just strictly out of character. I'm not but I mean uh, for a boarding action, wouldn't you want flechettes rather than slugs? You know, don't punch a hole in something uh yes. hole wise. Just you would you would want it. If I had my choice, I'd be shooting white phosphorus, but <laughs> I don't think I don't think the cops are giving me the option. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Um question. Yeah. What armor level is a vac suit? Uh normally they just act as uh jack. There's battle armor and stuff that exists, right? <laughs> Well, I understand there's battle armor. The suits don't mean Jack. I think that's what he's selling us. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't put a vac suit over my cloth armor, could I? <laughs> hey. Uh, well, it's normal if you think that there's going to be a combat to get into a vac suit. Well, I understand that. That's why I was hmm. asking. Uh, yeah, you, you can have like a, a, a Jack underneath because there's fairly a fair amount of space. No, what I'm saying is I per. The list I sent you, hmm. remember that? Yeah. It, it included cloth armor. Mm -hmm. Did I was I able to get that? 
Yes. Okay. Can I put a vac suit over that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Boring. Thank you. Uh, uh, Linda or Quinda, sorry. Yes. The where in the ship are they going to board us specifically? There's a part that they're going to sock it into, right? The yeah, the airlock. Uh, the airlock. Yeah. Um, can you help me get one of these crates? Um, over to the airlock. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, um, once we're in, once the drives are shut down, we're in zero G. So yeah, absolutely. Because I um, what I want is I want something I can take cover behind. Right. Oh, I'm with you. And a nice big thing filled with I don't know whatever. Uh. -huh. <sighs> something solid. Engine block. <laughs> okay so you set yourselves up and you know you've got like chunks of metal and, and like metal tables oh. and all that stuff you can sort of stuff that you can set you know, set up with um <clears throat> you set yourselves up on the other side of the airlock um waiting uh, wait for it to cycle through they come and they open the airlock and they don't wait for it to cycle through so you know you've got this big you've got this big hard middle door that's uh you know and just like thick plate glass that's in between uh, mm -hmm. uh for a um like a, a little porthole you mm -hmm. glance right. through the porthole and when your when your outer lock, airlock opens and all the air gushes out um you see these guys come in and they're in this strange sort of battle armor, looking oh, very cool. much like armor. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Looking very much like this. Yeah. With a little like. vision thing going back and forth. Oh God. Yep. And now we roll the credits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Posters, Thank you, Captain. Was toasters. Yep. <laughs> oh, something obviously happened to the AI when you drop when it got shot out of you. They recovered yep. it. So, <laughs> congrats. Yep. <laughs> Wave of mutilation says uh, my record for holding breath is 137 seconds, but you shouldn't hold your breath in space. The pressure differential will cause you to explode. Yeah, that's what all the schlock space opera has taught me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully these are only Cylons and they're not uh, Borg. <laughs> Indeed. You will be assimilated. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess they're going to sing us some Simon and Garfunkel, you know, the sounds of Cylons. <laughs> Good one. Thank you. All right. So, as I am, there we go. It, so we've we've gone from TJ Hooker to Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> <laughs> with some Grand Theft Auto in between. <laughs> hey, if yeah, if if we can, you know, if if we can get that uh, one of those Cylons from the. From the 2009 Battlestar Galactica, you know, it'd be so bad. <laughs> I've, I've had a good run, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there you, go, there you go, guys. Thus ends another season of Classic Traveler. Okay. Yes, good stuff. So when should our next game actually be? Well, that'll be next year, probably uh, late January. I'm going on a, we're all going on a summer holiday, or I am. Um, okay. Very family good. interstate and that. So it would be sometime in late January, but I don't know exactly what's happening. There's some family stuff going on. So. Okay. Cool. Well, I will await for communications. Mm -hmm. And just so you're aware, January 25th is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. I'm 23rd. Oh, congratulations. And the, the, there's a young lady across the street. She's expecting her second, who is due around the same date. Oh, wow. Let's, let's hear it for the Aquarians, right? Yes. The water babies. Yeah. Oh, 
Why are you talking about your birthday? You always play on your birthday. I'm just telling them when it is. So that's not saying you can't play on it. Just just because I plot and do things on your birthday with games. Yes, I I know. Tammy, I think he's just trying to tell me that I shouldn't kill his character on his birthday. (laughs) Um, um, I I did a I did a mutiny on his game when he was running it for his birthday and put his and involved his brother. Yeah, we, we so, had a whole separate Discord chat, and he never knew what was going on. Um, well, here, uh, go ahead, Ricky. So, is the captain or are the captain and Bubba? Or have they had enough time to regain consciousness, or no? Well, well, I think we've you know, we, on... we, we could have uh, given them some adrenaline to wake them up, but you know, then they'll fall over straight up. I just want to know at the start of next season, um, if like I'm going to, you know, have at least them help me fix the problem he caused. <laughs> There's a lot of bigger problems in law enforcement, don't you worrying about some local cops, please? I'm not worried about the cops, I'm worried about this. Uh, well, that's yeah, not my Robert, fault. Um, Robert Phillips asked all new characters this year, uh, next year. This is the end. Uh, well, we you never know. I mean, that's the nature of game groups, Rob. Um, that's right. You know, people always hope to keep going, and uh, you know we like all the players, and we hope that they stick with us. But uh, people have their commitments and other interests, so we always have to see what happens. Um, and new players are always welcome, of course. Just so, just so. Have an open, open game table. Well, we have our. Um, before I forget, before I forget, because we are towards the end of the year, I'm just uh, let let me let me just hog the camera for just a second because we have we have our advent dice calendar to do, and we have a new dice as always. I have lifted the door, uh, but I haven't looked at it yet. So let me just take a a hot second here to. Again, hog the spotlight, and I'm just going to, don't worry, they'll be back, folks, there. I didn't even banish them to the green room, so let's take a look here. This is our Advent Dice calendar, and we are on day 14 right there. So let's flip that open. You did great. Better than expected. Roll for awesomeness. (laughs) And, And we have this lovely D12 here that looks like it's got kind of a, uh, it's not metal, but it does have a metallic theme to it, kind of going there, if you can see that. So let's roll that bad boy. A 12! Our first topped-out dice, I think, of the uh, of the season here with this lovely uh, advent calendar from uh, Doodragao Gaming. Uh, not sponsored. This was actually a gift from my wife, but they did send us some neat swag, which is very cool. So uh, that, of course, is that. And we'll be back tomorrow with 15. So thank you very much to my uh, to my cool of cr- my crew of cool role players for allowing me to uh, allowing me to, to step in and do that before I forgot. Now, let me get back to you guys and bring you all back in. Hang on a second here. There, okay. Back to the table. Have you done your recognition yet? I have not. I have not recognized those. Now, some of you folks may have noticed that uh, the, the crab has been holding... Oh, let me fix my camera. Uh, the crab has been dutifully... Uh, pointing out there, if you'd like to support the show on Patreon or subscribe star, or, you know, you can drop us a, a tip on PayPal, or you can buy us a coffee. There are some folks who do that and they literally help keep the lights on around here. So let me just take a hot second to say special thank you to Joshua Garlock, Lord Corian, Ricky Maru, Mobius, Kevin Reynolds, Doomsword Deathmaster, Mark Simpson, Damien247, James F. Keck, William Smith, the Dungeon Minister, Manny Wall, Mark Corey, Kevin Wood, Todd Sharp, Carnivore Farmer, Rob, Jeremy Rule, Boganora, Mikey Mank, Sky Hernstrom, Pete Sullivan, the DM's Council, and Baron Von Headbanger. Thank you guys so, so much for contributing to the ongoing of the show. Um, 
Oh, speaking of space stuff, uh, this just in from our uh, from our science division. Uh, my buddy Albuquerque Halsey says the Soyuz on the ISS just blew a leak. That's no good. Hope they get that fixed. Isn't that and there's normal for the Soyuz? Yeah. And Bubba's back. Can, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> Sounds like he's in space. Yes. Yeah, it it's a space themed episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys have been enjoying yourselves. You keep showing up, so I assume you do. Yeah, I'm having and, fun. It's a blast. And- <laughs> The audience seems to too. We, we've got we've got a good crowd tonight. I think we've peaked out at around fourteen, um, which is which is really good. Uh, you folks seem to like the the let's plays, so we're we're going to keep the three of those. I've actually had people come in, and uh, this is like back in October when I ran uh, the uh, the October Scare Fest. There, running some some classic Call of Cthulhu, and I had people asking me like. Uh, you're you're going to keep doing Gamma World, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do Gamma World. We'll do it and the Call of Cthulhu game, like do Gamma World on Saturday or Sunday. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not running uh, four live stream games a week. I'm sorry, that's just oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's I, I, I'm not. Th- there's this. Uh, if you're from the southeastern United States, and it, it 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 may have kind of spread around a little bit. There, there's this uh, program, um, uh, uh, El Sabado Gigante. And it's like this three or four hour variety program um, out of South America, and I can't imagine getting up to do like a four hour show every week. But I've kind of gotten a taste of doing that five nights a week to three hours a night sometimes. <laughs> um, except I don't, I don't have sexy Brazilian girls dancing around me while I do. You guys will see we get. What, you can't convince your wife to put something on and <laughs> prance. Oh no 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 no! That's that's not going to happen. Uh, I could probably convince Todd to do it, but that might not be the best for ratings. <laughs> oh, that would, that would be awesome for ratings. I, I'd get me some coke. I'd get me one of them coconut bras and a grass skirt and some fruit on my head. Man, I'd be, I'd be jamming. <laughs> That's not the kind of a they'd have audience to we want to attract. They'd arrest us, and then they'd have to read us our Carmen Miranda rights. <laughs> but um, yeah, there, there, there's, uh, there, there, there's. Uh, only, uh, only so many hours in a week, unfortunately, guys. But uh, uh, we're we're taking a little break for the upcoming Kringling, and we'll be back with Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's not that far away. It's a, it's in twenty twenty three. Yeah, it's we're taking like two <laughs> weeks off. And I'll be I'm showing- disappointed in the twenty twenties. Mike Pondsmith lied to me. <laughs> right? <laughs> Where's I the mean, computer you know- jack in the side of my head and the Uzi popping up from my forearm? You know, it's <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Musk has got neural link going, so you're almost there. As far as the gun in your arm, I can't help you with that. <laughs> I want the subdermal armor and stuff as well. <laughs> <laughs> the closest I can give you to the gun in your arm is, is if you want to go full Travis Bickle and cut up a uh, a drawer rail and and tape a thirty eight to it, so you can. You talking to me? <laughs> That's, that's the well, hey, back, uh, for you. Use a punch glove. <laughs> uh, they use those in World War II. Basically, you load a shotgun shell and have a glove. You punch somebody and it goes off in their face. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that With the script, like it would probably be too. well used. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Bubba could use one of those. I can't believe you killed TJ Hooker. You swine. <laughs> and you ran over Rico. Yeah. Okay. Well. When, when Bubba is unconscious, I am taking all this bedazzled stuff and I'm hiding it. <laughs> that, it's no. hidden. It is that hidden. That inter-party fight, I am not going to get in the middle it of. It's hidden. <laughs> he needs to make my bedazzled flip flops first. Yeah. I don't care. Everything is hidden right now from him. 
<laughs> oh, boo. You put it as risk. You didn't get in the damn car, at least on it. <laughs> I'm not toasting it. I'm not destroying it. I'm hiding it. And each time he does something good, he gets one item back. <laughs> You you just like seeing a grown man cry is what it is. That, that's what it's it called is. tough love, baby. Tough love. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Where is that? Where's my shot? There we go. No, wrong one. So I cur Ooh. I I certainly can't Next complain. Next time I tell you to get in the car, you get in the car. <laughs> Well, just just for that, we're going to keep one of those Cylons, and I'm going to bedazzle the Cylon. Oh, <laughs> you don't have any of your bedazzling stuff right now, so... Oh, I'll find it. <laughs> I'm the mechanic. But, but at, the least you, at least hit a lot where you didn't get killed. So at least put one of these on it. I would have been really upset with you guys if you killed Heather Locklear. <laughs> but you, you know, you know what the weird part is. The cops come up; they're talking to me and 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 Bill, and then all of a sudden, all the women come out of the pawn shop and just go, "Girls gone wild on the cops." <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, we had to practice our hop wiring skills. Yeah, I was. I mean, all I was doing was smarting off with them, right? I mean, that if, if, if it <laughs> we walked saw up, you guys, you were screwing it up. We took action. If, if if well, no, I walked in and I said, "It's time to go." I didn't say it's time to come out and massacre all the police. I said, "It's time to go." <laughs> we were going to massacre them until Bubba decided to take them on. <laughs> We were perfectly happy with like retreating. Hey, Good Lord. They, shot, they shot at me first. I hadn't even talked to the cops. I just stood there and stared at them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why your bedazzling stuff is on hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Bubba. I'll make sure it stays safe. Oh, I'm not going to damage it or get rid of it, but oh, <laughs> he's got to well, earn that stuff back. The next planet we go to, I'm I'm buying four bedazzling kits. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Think about think think about all the passengers that will want to ride on the ship after we have a couple of bedazzled <laughs> Cylons. I had such tiny revolvers. No wonder they weren't hurting you much. <laughs> They're tiny. Look at them. Compared to modern movies where they have these like cannons, what are they like twenty twos or something? Oh, my God! And those no are bullets. only regular thirty eights. Yeah, those, there's, those there's no bullets in them. Look at those chambers. Look, see. Oh no! Oh no! He's got some. Uh, yeah, he's no, got some nice blanks in there. Some yeah. lids. <laughs> he wouldn't have hollow points. He's too humane. <laughs> no, they were using semi wad cutters, I think. <laughs> I, I posted a link in chat if you want to look at the at the gun glove. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, let's let's keep that in the private. I we're already not getting monetized for this. I I, I don't I don't need the feds to roll by my house too. <laughs> <laughs> this was an OSS weapon used in World War II. What? So you can have you can be demonetized for excessive cheese, can you? Yeah, because <laughs> this was very cheesy. <laughs> it was it was pretty cheesy. <laughs> yeah, it was so realistic. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I mean, I mean okay. It, the behavior was not necessarily really realistic, but I think the outcome was reasonable um, because in the end, you were six PCs taking on. Four cops, but the cops weren't coordinating. It was like two at, at go at you, and then two was, and you had you achieved surprise and stuff. So you took out all of them, and then two of you ended up severely wounded, um, and then you and you got chased down and that. And if you tried to 
fight on from there, you definitely would have all been killed. It's just a matter of how many of them they would have taken with you. Uh, and then you're right. able to take off in a, a spacecraft, you know. Um, in most, in the real world, you don't get to just take off in a rocket. <laughs> so, no. <clears throat> um, and they'll, and uh, if you did, um, you, they'd have some means of, like if you try to take off in a Cessna or something, then they'd start, they'd send other aircraft against you. Well, they'd be taken very seriously. Any any um, um, modern aircraft trying to take off, even a uh, handgun, will cause damage to it. Yeah. yeah. But a, st a StarCraft, by the nature of the fact of the where it's going, has to be a lot more robust. Yeah. And yeah. the fact It'll, that it, uh, it. Yeah, and it's it's got fire coming out of the end of one end. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you tend to back off. Yeah, you don't right. want to be be behind that F-14 when it lights off its afterburner. No. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the F-14 in principle could be hurt by gunfire from close up, but yeah. if it's um if it's hitting its afterburner to take off, you're not going to fire at it. You just get out of the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in the end, you were leaving, so you you were no longer their problem. So. Right. <laughs> But now we're dealing with the Cylons. <laughs> yeah. Now we so, have another um, problem. Yes. Yeah. It so, all depends uh, on what level of armor they have on them. <laughs> so like I said, the, um, the behavior may or may not have been uh, realistic, but that's up to you as players, what you think is, uh -huh. is reasonable for your guys to do. Oh, but yeah. I hope that the outcomes will be realistic, reasonable. That's that's about as much as you can hope for. But you know, if the players are crazy, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Every, yeah, I think this has been said since you know 1972 or something, since Arneson and Blackmore and all the rest. Mm. Or no, since before that, since 67, 68, and um, uh, what was his name? Uh, Weasley, David Weasley or Wesley, however you say his surname, and his. Um, uh, Brownstein game. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that was terrible. What a disaster. And then the next morning, everyone calling him up going, that was awesome. When are we playing again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I, the first con game I ever ran, I had I, it's a very similar experience. Uh, I did a single four hour slot. It was uh, about a a 60, 70 mile drive from uh, from where I am in Central Florida over to Tampa. A friend was like, you got to come run a game. You gotta, and I was like, okay, fine. So I hauled all my Dwarven Forge, which at the time was like two boxes of it. The, the, like two boxes like that of it, not a lot. Um, and I set up a dungeon and I ran it for four hours. And I'm like, geez, guys, I guess, you know, our time slot's over. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And the wife of the guy who had asked me to come and run the game was kind enough to be in my game. And if you're watching, hello, dear. Um, and she was like, well, are you, because the convention is two days, are you staying overnight? And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess I can. And they all unanimously decided that I was running my game again the next day. So we could finish. <laughs> and they, like, they were over the moon. And I was like, I I'm just... You know, I had only been perma DMing D and D for about six years at that point, but I must have done something right because because they they wanted to play. So you know, it it worked out in the end, and I was I was happy. They were happy. Everything was happy. Yeah, I think yeah. the basic DMing thing is just giving them enough rope to hang themselves with because they seem to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you you gave us you gave us plenty of rope and <laughs> then a, a very nice pallet on <laughs> the pallet of Gibson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh dear! Now I have to note that because I'll just remember chaos. So I have to note now. That. Uh, now Kyle has has often regaled me of his other traveler groups that he ran uh, this prior to the the you know, the coof, um, about the wild things. I can't imagine, but that when he sits down over the break with say Merkava, he's going to, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. I just had a couple, <laughs> a 
cops walk up and shake him down and it turned into that scene from heat but also if buster <laughs> in it uh, pretty much yeah it was pretty much the scene from heat <laughs> except with yeah. revolvers <laughs> the fast yeah. and the furious <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yep completely insane if if this if you guys like this kind of insanity please uh give the video a like give it a thumbs up if you're just stopping by for the first time whether you're coming in from facebook or or you know just somewhere out there twitter maybe youtube was kind and put my video where more people than just my subscribers can see it but you're not subscribed please click that subscribe button and click the bell icon for notifications. It really helps. Some, some lunatic told me last night, so some gold hearted lunatic said I could have 10 K subs in three years. That ain't happening, but it was awfully nice of them to say it. Um, no, it, it it's happening, Bill. Bill Khan is going to be a real thing. God damn it. It's not <laughs> Khan. It's, guac. it's guac. Great underground online gaming convention or in that case great underground offline gaming convention it's not <laughs> bill Con. my 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 fans are trying to say that it's going to be called bill con it's guac it, it's bill it's bill con <laughs> See what I i'm bringing do. i'm bringing my own chips that's fine you do that we'll get kyle in we, we'll we'll arrange it so kyle can be there running some games they all sweet I'm sorry, you what? I'll swim, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> Across the the pond. Pond. oh, that's yeah. So June, uh, I'm not going to get 10K subs by June. That's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. Um, but in June, the the actual Guat Great Underground Online Gaming Convention will happen. Uh, I haven't set a firm date yet, but uh, it is free. It is all online. Um, I will have a sign up sheet uh, once we we uh, cement the date in. So if you want to run a game, if you want to participate in a game, if you want to come to our artist alley, which I, I may be interviewing some creators, or if you want to uh, if you just want to hang out and have a good time, uh, we will we will do that over a weekend in June and I think it'll be oodles of fun. So please come and do that. And Kyle, I hope will be able to, at least participate a little bit of that. So. Well, I have said too. Yes. Because um, honestly, and I say this with absolutely not a hint of irony, uh, the fact that I'm not in, in, in a rubber hotel is largely because of Kyle taking on the burden of doing some some uh, some show work uh, midway through the week, it it, le it kind of lets my brain reboot a little bit. I'm like, all I have to do is make sure that he's not having any technical issues, and then we roll. So Kyle, uh, you're my brother from another mother, brother. So I really appreciate yes. him. Well, nobody can game master every time. Everyone needs to be able to switch off their brain and become a player. And switching off the brain when you become a player explains a lot of player behavior. So yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't even turn my brain on even when I am DMing. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. That's what these little guys are for the, the dice. Uh huh. Speaking of of uh, Merc, are you are you ever are, are we ever going to get her in a game, Kyle? You think you can drag? Like she has to work for a living. So she has to work for a living, and um, we do this during the day here. So. And she has to work for a living. Careers. <laughs> yeah. I don't think much of them, but here we are. Just tell her to come on YouTube and grift like the rest of us dishonest people do. <laughs> oh. Oh. Saving lives, being a paramedic. <laughs> do you, do you want to do that? Or do you want to play funny dice elf games? I think we all know the answer. She's not out on the road at the moment. She's on... Um... Uh, uh, triple O, your nine one one. There's that, uh, but if there's a case, the, but the people who answer it just go through a, a checklist. They've got a it used to be a big folder, but now it's a computer checklist. And if it's not something clear, like no, you're fine, piss off, or right. uh, well, shit, you're about <laughs> to die, or you're you're about to die, we, we'll send someone straight away. Um, if it's some sort of case where they're not sure because they're not the person 
answering the phone isn't medically trained or whatever, uh, they then go to uh, it, it's a triage thing, and then they and they talk through it and that, um, and so yeah, that's when they they get through the the more strange cases. So she's sitting on the phone. So it's a bit. It, it's sort of it's funny because it's it's less stress because you're not out there dealing with people. Mm -hmm. but it's more stress because you churn through more because normally you might just have a, a few call outs in a shift. Um, and then um, you, you take them to the hospital and you've got to wait for a while to hand them over to the, the to the hospital and stuff. Whereas on that, you know, you're on these phone calls. And so it's just boom, get through on the phone and then either and then sort them out, piss off or, uh, yeah, we'll send it, an ambo out or um, we'll refer you to this other service or whatever. Mental health is a common one. Um, and, you know, oh, I've swallowed a box of Panadol. Yeah, okay, that's not going to kill you, but... Um, yeah, okay. Um, and, Not the brightest um, thing, eh? <laughs> yeah, and then, um, uh, yeah, it turns through them. Uh, it turns through them quickly. So less stress, but more stress. It's just different. So, and, yeah, and I, for, for people unfamiliar, Panadol is like Tylenol. Mm. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, it's I, para, no, it's para no idea. Paracetamol, so just different brand name. Um, so if you take enough, it will kill you, but it's very painful because it it, it destroys your liver. So it's yeah. a really, really horrible, painful way to go. Bad, bad so stuff. Don't do that. Don't do that. I, <laughs> it, it, it's funny. I have both been the user of and supporter of things over the phone, tech support. I do it. I find that to be a very frustrating way to deal with things, and it can be... I, I, I can't imagine life-saving uh, service over the phone. And I'll tell you, this is not a life or death situation. Although it did involve a hospital I was working for at the time. But I had a, a, a vendor called me once about an issue that was a couple of levels over my head. But he's like, no, 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 no. I will literally tell you what you need to be looking at. So I took our... Uh, I, I took my phone, I forwarded the office phone over to the, the data center and, uh, you know, I was walking around. We had these uh, Meridian phones. If you've worked in an office, you've seen it, beige kind of angular job, Meridian stamped in the plastic. Um, had like a 400 foot cord on it, uh, you know, phone cord. And I walk over and I'm like, yeah, so I'm behind the commo rack. And uh, he's like, okay, are you looking at, uh, go around, you know, what is the label printed on the on the thing? And I said, well, I read it to him. And he's like, okay, go around the backside. All right, I want you to unplug this. But before you do, we're going to verify exactly where you're at, you know, reach out and put your left hand on, now go to. And I was reading the whole thing down. I was going through the whole punch list that the guy supporting me was telling me to do and then my boss came in and she said uh what are you doing and i'm like oh i've got regional i'm doing this and she's like you are in completely the wrong place <laughs> if you unplug that you'll knock down like a quarter of the network <laughs> i was like but they t and she's like i understand completely that I mean, she wasn't angry, you know, didn't rage and pull her hair out, but it was literally a case of I was certain of what I was looking at. He was certain of what he was looking at. They were completely different things. And I cannot fathom having a person who needs medical assistance on the phone and you get the medical assistance equivalent of that, you know? Well, right. well the, the vast majority of the time, the, um, the paramedics aren't going to, it's not a matter of life and death, the vast majority of the time. A large chunk of their work is patient transport. They're, they're taking like this 88 year old from aged care off to get a scan mm -hmm. or a dialysis or something like that. Um, that's a large chunk of it. And there's a whole lot of other stuff that's, uh, people have hurt themselves and they need to be checked. You know, someone's, someone was drunk and they fell down and they smashed their head. Right, mm. so they need to be checked because there, there may be serious damage going on, but it may be it may be nothing much, and the guy wakes up tomorrow with a headache, uh, and that. Mm. So usually it's <laughs> so, not like a stroke or a gunshot victim or something. Yeah, well, gunshot victims pretty rare in Australia. We've got a pretty um, a low crime rate here and restricted uh, firearms. Like we have about three or four hundred homicides here annually, and only about twenty or thirty happen with firearms. Um, yeah, I remember uh, when Australia so went and confiscated everything. Yeah. Well, even before that, we didn't have a lot. Um, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's just, I mean, it's the usual government thing. They have either apathy or panic. 
Um, and so they went through a period of panic. But um, even before that, we didn't have a lot because it just the, the firearms crime tracks with crime generally. Uh, so if you have a lot of crime, you'll have a lot of firearms crime. If you have not much, you'll have not much. Um, but, um, yeah, like I've got a, a, a good friend, James, who's a paramedic, and he's been a paramedic for like 15 years now and he's never been to a gunshot scene um stabbings yeah stabbings and and, and plenty of assaults and stuff uh but not a gunshot scene. it's just un unusual in australia or um, or just random injury type of things with like vehicles or yeah mechanical yeah. kind of crushings well, or building collapses yeah, or something. yeah but i mean even that even that's reduced now like um so the i was born 1971 the year before i was born 1970 was the most road deaths australia ever had which was like 3,800, something like that. Um, and now we do about 1,200 a year. And that's with twice the population. Um, and that's because of seatbelt laws and more aggressive uh, breath testing uh, about alcohol and that. Like I remember there was a comedian talking on the radio and he was saying he went to the pub and he, he said, I knew it was an old school pub because they had a large car park. <laughs> because it used to be like on a Friday night, guys would get their pay packet and they'd go down to the pub and they'd be three sheets to the wind and they'd be driving along, <laughs> like leaning over the steering wheel, peering through it. Why is it so foggy? You know, <laughs> it's everything like that. And nowadays there's less of a culture of drink and driving and stuff. And we've got airbags and stuff. Um, another paramedic I know said, you know, there was a type of injury that people get when, when their head strikes the, the steering wheel that you just don't see nowadays because people have got airbags and things like that. So it's a lot, a lot of things that make it a lot, um, make, uh, make us a lot safer. And, and so there isn't so much of that dramatic stuff. Um, so the paramedics work is much more boring and um, a lot of it's dealing with mental health and stuff. Uh, and even if somebody um, overdoses, that's often uh, quite quick to deal with. They've got a drug called Narcan uh, which yep. they like someone's overdosed with heroin or something, and they jab them with that. And literally within 30 seconds, the person is up and going, oh, shit, man, you, you ruined my high. And they're all angry. <laughs> it's like, well, you're going to die. So but they're all angry. Yeah. Um, uh, and what about really all your poisonous called. things, though? I mean, your spiders yeah. and snakes. And yeah, that, that yeah, kind of thing. That's, unless you're in a rural area, that's not that common. It's not that common. Um yeah, because, I mean, like a spider or a snake doesn't want to bite you because they can't eat you. So what's the point? You know, you're too big to eat. Uh, so they just do it like if you step on them or if you get in their way or whatever, you know, the, the snake's scared. So you so you avoid the long grass in summer. You know, so uh, even that's not that common. Well, not what, 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 about, what about the spiders that come like once a year and take over an entire park and entire towns where the everything's covered in spider webs <laughs> no no that doesn't happen the closest we have that is um on uh christmas oh, sorry the, the cocos and keeling islands this island out in uh in uh, the indian ocean that is where it runs for some reason and they, they've got a crabs they've got a, a part of the year with about a million crabs come across the island and people can just pick them up and put them in the pot and whatever there's millions of the things so, you know, no, we don't have spiders overwhelming a town. Sorry to disappoint you. It's not that exciting. We, we just have the diseases of Western affluence, of, of being obese and diabetic and heart disease and, and stuff. Well, I, <laughs> too, I tell you too what. Too much fish and chips and beer. When, 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 I, when I was living in Sri Lanka, <laughs> I was, I'd been there for maybe three days. And I, I, was, I was in the shower one morning. And I saw movement out of the corner of my eye, and I just turned and looked, and there was this spider, no exaggeration, from its its radius had to have been a good 10 inches to a foot. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest uh. daggum spider I've ever seen in my life, and I just froze. And I was like, okay, do I splash water on it? No, because then it'll fall down here with me, and then they're going to come out here and find me dead and the spider dead. No, <laughs> that ain't going to work. <laughs> and so I just, I, I took my shower and the whole time I was staring at that spider, like, are you, are you a jumper? <laughs> are, are you, are you spin webs? What, what do you do with the spider? And I found out that the spider's completely harmless 
to humans, right? And that that they're they're <laughs> they're so it's a daddy so, long legs. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, but it looked like a daggum tarantula that was like, it literally was the size of a dinner plate. It was the biggest mm-hmm. thing I'd ever seen in my life. Sounds like yeah. a wolf spider, but I, I'm I've not seen, messing with those I've either. I've seen something like that. I've seen something like that. I, I've no idea what kind it was, but uh, a long time ago in a shithole far, far away, uh, <laughs> in the army, we were posted this place and th- this big ass spider appeared in our tent. It was like, you know, the size of a dinner plate or a small dinner plate. And um, it sort of came up to some guy's stretcher and he basically squealed like a little girl and jumped on to his stretcher. And at the sound, the spider went away and then towards somebody else's stretcher. And he did the same thing. So it was like spider <laughs> tennis. It was like, ah, 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 going back and forth across the room until one of the guys, uh, nicknamed Sven, stepped on it. Boom. With his big size 12 boots. And the like, legs were sticking out. It was like a red run or something. Wait. And somebody said, oh, Sven, come on, mate. That might have been endangered. And he said, well, it's fucking endangered now. Ah! <laughs> I, uh, I had uh, th- this, this very office I'm in when we moved in here was uh, it had been the, the gym slash workout place for the previous owners. Obviously, it's not that now. Um, <laughs> but when we first moved in, we were like, okay, this is going to be our starter house. You know, we'll live here until, you know, our first child is born and then we'll move to, and life has a funny way of getting in the way of that. He said 22 years later. Um, <laughs> but so, so this area that I'm in now uh, was, was where uh, we just stored stuff. My lawnmower was right over here uh, at a push lawnmower. And I come out here one night and I don't remember what I was doing, but I could just see under the edge of the lawnmower. There's a little red and green twinkles. And I'm like, is that, is there like glitter? Is that like, like a Christmas ornament under there or something? And I, and I, I take a step towards it. And out scuttles a, a, a wolf spider uh, who's the diameter of his legs are probably about that of the palm of my hand. And I, I, you know, I very calmly reacted and I said, oh, it's a wolf spider. They get up into the walls or the ceiling and they eat invasive pests. I'm cool with that. And if you believe that, I've got a bridge I want to sell you. No, I grabbed a garden shovel and I drained <laughs> this thing. And he's lying there flat on the floor. Now, I didn't hit him with the edge. I bang. It was like a cartoon sound. And he's lying flat on the floor. And I take a step towards him. And the mf -er jumps at me. He was faking me out. And he jumps at me. And I was like, I don't need to be in this room anymore. So I left. (laughs) And I the Geico commercial with the weird, creepy stuff in in the attic. I was just like, uh, you know what? The, you can have this room. I just, I'll need my mower in a few weeks. Goodbye. So I <laughs> tipped my hat and slowly rode away. You got a temporary residence, but you're being <laughs> evicted eventually. <laughs> Stay in the walls and in the ceiling, and I don't have a problem with you. You are welcome to all the cockroaches you find. So yeah, that that's uh, and we sit, we do periodically see them, and when we see them, they have to die. So that's my mom you know. almost took out our garden spraying for one of those things once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my mom always freaks out and loses it over lizards of all things. You know, just the little green and brown little garden lizards. And there was there was one time I'll never forget this. I was. 14 years old and my mom let out a scream like she'd been stabbed and I I was in the yard playing and I heard her scream well I go running inside to see what's happening and she she is up on top of the kitchen table and she's doing this dance thing like she's trying to step on something and I said what are you doing and she said it's it's going to get me. And I said, what's going to get you? What are you talking about? And then she pointed. And this lizard, it couldn't have been no more than than a couple of inches from from mouth to tip of tail. 
And I said, well, it's just a lizard. And she said, no, it ain't. And she, I mean, she lost, she lost her mind. Like she was getting ready to start throwing plates at it. So I, I, I went over there and I picked it up and I walked over to the table and I held it up and I said, is this what you're afraid of? And it was three days later, I woke up and realized that that was a mistake. Oh no, the lizard got him. <laughs> just, he just dropped off the lizard. The lizard slowly coming up behind him in the background as he's telling this story, and it was a mistake. <laughs> cuts this cuts the audio. Yep, it was a mistake. <laughs> remember, remember me, Mister Todd. <laughs> when you kill a lizard, <laughs> Todd, remember to finish the job. <laughs> My mother-in-law, well, just she cracked up because I was talking to her on the phone, and we had moved into this farmhouse, so of course there's going to be mice. And as I'm talking to her, this mouse peeks its head out from basically inside the stove. And I'm angry. I am angry that there's a mouse in here. So I grab tongs and I'm trying to get this stupid thing. And she's like, what is that banging? I'm like, I explained to her and she just cracks up. She's like, yeah, if you... If I was talking to my other daughter-in-law and she well, saw a mouse, she would be screaming on the table. You're trying to take it out. Goodness. <laughs> well, folks, I myself need to step away. Uh, if you would like to continue the post-game nerd council, uh, you certainly may. But I, think I need to have lunch. It's quarter past two in the afternoon here. Oh, my I gosh. want to hear the rest of Bubba's story, though. Oh, no. Yeah, my pop. My, my my mom actually knocked me out because I held the lizard up to her and she was she was so deathly afraid of him she she knocked me out. <laughs> I, I never even saw the punch. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. All right, guys. Uh, listen, thank you very, so much. <laughs> thank you very much to the audience for being here. Thank you, Kyle, for continuing to run a, a, an absolutely baller uh, traveler game. It is it is so much fun. Thank you to the players who participate. Thank you to the audience who watches. And uh, I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, D and D pioneer Tracy Lesh will be on the show. Yes, we actually snuck in a guest for. Uh, prior to Christmas, Tracy will be here tomorrow talking about art, talking about D and D and just whatever the heck he wants to, because Tracy's a good guy and, and we'll, we'll give him a little bit of space to do that. Friday, we'll be back with some classic, um, it's a classic traveler. So some classic gamma world, gamma. which gamma, that's right. Uh, both Sapphire and Todd Bubba will be in that one. And then Monday, we're just, we just start the whole thing over again. Cause I can't be stopped. Well, I can, I, can, I can be slowed down, but this big old bus starts moving and look out. So thanks, everyone, again. Uh, I love you all. Have an absolutely wonderful evening. Peace. Everyone have a good evening, and have a very Merry Christmas for those who celebrate it, whatever Wait. holidays you choose to celebrate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Good night, everyone.